um, approved licenses for um, alcohol and um, uh, food uh, preparation and food sales as we do each year. We'll close the warrant in our January 5th special town meeting. Um, we'll uh, hear on a uh, results of a uh, fiscal 15 compensation and classification plan study, discuss a proposed change by petition uh, in the bylaw regarding firearms. We'll uh, vote on special town meeting articles for the January um, 5th, no, 5th town meeting and um, vote on some special town meeting articles. Approve the addendum to the regional health agreement with Melrose, go through approving some of the minutes and then we'll adjourn to executive session to discuss uh, subjects related to collective bargaining and litigation. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I'll open the floor for liaison reports. Marcy. Um, yeah, I, I um, don't have much. I, um, I did get a call from Joanne last, uh, or yeah, the other this week. She's planning to do an article on the zoning, um, the zoning um, bylaw that we passed. And so um, we had a good conversation. And I think that's coming up this week. Is that true? So. Is this a four-part series, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I believe she wanted to make it easy to understand for people. So waiting for the we'll movie version to come out. <laughs> we'll wait and see what she does. I don't know. I think our, our biggest success was at um, Reading Cooperative Bank when we had the after-hours session. So. <laughs> but people actually liked, this, liked the presentation, so that was good. So. I, I, thought, I thought it was a great show on the part of the town staff and all of the yes. volunteers to get material, arguably it wasn't perfect, but it was in great shape and in a form that was um, understandable by all if you took enough time. Um, ultimately, we got it right after after a couple of attempts. Ultimately, I thought the best outcome of all could have been uh, that could have been achieved was achieved. So. Absolutely, and, and the really important thing is that people needed to take the time to yeah. talk about it. And going away and looking at it in six months, people would have been in the same situation when they got there. I can tell you that because, quite frankly, our committee would get together and we would have to go through it in committee because it's just very difficult to look at. And 80 years so. later, it's, it's time to do it <laughs> That's again. That's right. <laughs> <So. Good. laughs> it might be easier if you didn't wait quite so long the next time. But. Thank you, Marcy. Um, from my side, just very quickly, I um, had occasion with uh, uh, John Halsey and, and Bob Lowe last year to visit Camp Curtis Gill to uh, welcome back a contingent of Massachusetts and New England-based uh, England um National Guard troops that had been in Afghanistan for eight or 12 months. It was, we all have seen the videos of pe people coming back from those sorts yeah. of assignments, but what you don't get on the video is just the, the number of families, children, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, this enormous number, the enormous number of lives that are touched by these people going off to war and coming back. And uh, we, we left very quickly after the group was dismissed. It, um, it was just amazing to see the outpouring of love and affection and just welcoming these guys home, so. Um, also, last night I happened to join the uh, CPDC meeting regards the uh, 186 <coughs> Summer Street um, discussion with criteria on child enrichment. Um, I thought the conduct of the meeting was extremely well uh, thought out. Uh, Chair Jeff Hansen did a great job laying out the ground rules, and I thought the conduct of both sides was, uh, was outstanding. Um, I left at about 10.30. And um, I, I understand the, the meeting's been continued, but my sense is that the discussions are converging. So anyway, that's my report. Dan? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I attended the early childhood-based uh, working group committee uh, on December 4th. This is the second meeting of that group. Uh, a very wide uh, representation, uh, all spectrums of the school department, two selectmen, uh, two FinCom rep, I think one alternating FinCom rep. Uh, George Katsufis, who's uh, the associate member from CPDC, is there. Uh, we talked in general about uh, narrowing down uh, the classroom requirements. Uh, one new fact that I guess has been presented uh, at the school committee just prior to this group meeting was that Chapter 70 aid for full day kindergarten is not in the works and will not be in the works for any communities uh, that had previously been thought to apply in year two and beyond which may may not change the demand, but it will certainly change the financing options and may, in fact, result in staying at a tuition-based full-day K for the foreseeable future. But that's for a future meeting to decide. The group is adjourning over the month of January to let the budget process play out because there could be budgetary implications on space demands. 
and they will be working doubtlessly hand in hand with the new uh, permanent building committee that I anticipate Tom Meaney will be forming. Um, also, I, I watched CPDC last night. I watched the whole thing uh, when they came back into session on 186 summer. Uh, I will add to your comments my, my praise to all parties who were there and the uh, very professional way everybody conducted themselves. Uh, that meeting is being continued until January 12th, at which point uh, I would anticipate a decision being rendered by CPDC. That's uh, my report. Thank you very much. Tom, do you have any report? Um, I also attended the, um, the, the meeting of the Permanent Space Committee and um, of course echo everything that Dan has to say. One of the couple of things to add is that there was a discussion um, on the impact of the Permanent Building Committee. Mm -hmm. So should that pass, um, which you know, there's just a kind of a, I think a general consensus that it will pass because there was not an appetite for a permanent building committee. Um, what does that do to this committee? Um, not sure that it causes it to go away at all, but um, it does probably change the scope of how that committee will end. Uh, it will probably right. end more clearly, more quickly with some recommendations to the school committee that will then, you know, if, if their intentions are try to go forward, then up to the build permanent building committee for analysis and so forth. Um, one of the other things that was discussed at that meeting was um, the interest that the committee in general had for uh, more public awareness of what was going on in the committee. Um, and to that end, um, mm -hmm. the superintendent uh, is writing a blog on his, on his yep. blog. Uh, he shared that with the committee and asked them to pass that along, which, which I have done. Um, I think more information is better, you know, when it comes to that, for sure. Um, and so um, it, it was a, an eye-opener to just reiterate what Dan was saying. Um, um, the, um, the finance person, Martha, presented some information that showed, um, was, was really eye-opening relative to the Chapter 70 reimbursements for operational um, free all-day kindergarten tuition free all-day kindergarten right? taxpayer finance uh, taxpayer finance <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, you know, I, I knew I'd get to the right word um, uh, it's represented was a operational cost of about 1.1 million dollars which evaporates yep. from chapter 70 tied to a formula that frankly we're not really close to but I think as the information has made itself available, it's been brought to light and it was brought to light to the school committee first and then of course, you know, to this uh, um, temporary committee. Um, so uh, I just wanted to kind of put a wrap on my end of that uh, school committee visit. Um, a brief one on our CASA, I was, I visited the board meeting there and, um, and it's, kind of business as usual, uh, the primary focus was a um, kind of a report on what had gone on with the multi-town World Cafe, you know, uh, that had been sponsored by uh, Senator Jason Lewis. And so on we go, you know, they continue to, you know, do good work and, and seek other ways to be able to, you know, fight this battle that we're fighting, you know, in this town, not just in this town, but every town. So. Um, uh, you know, I know Marcy was doing some traveling. I uh, stepped in for her uh, with a visit with the library, the, um, the librarian, and uh, two of the board members. Um, and it was a discussion around pay and grade, which I'm going to not get into just because I think Bob has got a, you know, an entire presentation that pulls everything together. But um, suffice to say that that was interesting and informational, which I think this will be as we go along. One other thing that I did um, that was, you know, kind of in the um, very interesting category was I made an unofficial visit uh, by invitation to the Rotary uh, this week, uh, the Reading Rotary. And a big part of that visit was tied to the fact that the um, 
the robotics team from Reading Memorial High School was there, and it was mm -hmm. quite interesting. Um, one of their see one of their robots and to and to have the young people um, discuss how this thing has caught on over the course of three years and how quickly they've arced up in the this is a very competitive sport mm -hmm. if you will I mean uh, it is I mean they suit up and uh, after they've built the robots and uh, in, in the competition and we got to see a video which I would suggest that at some point we invite them uh, to let us know what's going on I mean we kind of know what the baseball team and the football team does but this is kind of a new thing and it's a it's a new activity that is uh, kind of a varsity level sport really I mean it's very interesting and the young people that presented it um, when they realized that I was a selectman asked if I would share some very exciting news um, that their that their team is doing on March 6th through the 8th uh, Reading Memorial High School will host the North Shore District's first robotics competition uh, the event will be an excellent opportunity to promote science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to STEM education and careers in Reading. The competition itself is free to all spectators, so we're planning to reach out to the middle and elementary schools to encourage them to attend with their families. Additionally, there'll be 36 robotics teams coming to this event from all around the area, so the competition will bring actually thousands of people to Reading over the you know over the course of these three days. So it's. It's a very exciting thing, in my opinion. Um, I'd urge anybody watching to go down to this thing, um, just based on what I saw in the video. I mean, they build giant robots that play a game in the field house where they're passing the giant ball around and scoring goals with these things. It's, <coughs> it's amazing to know that these young people primarily raise their own money for this because it's not inexpensive. Um, and they will, in January, be given kind of the parameters of what the robot can do this time and what the competition will be. And they then have six weeks uh, and a finite budget. They, can, they can't ex go over a certain amount of money. And they got to build this thing and get it done and then get out and compete with it. It's, it's very exciting. At the same time, their team is at the event is going to sponsor um, a, com a community food drive where teams and spectators are encouraged to bring food, which is then going to go on to the food pantry. So there's kind of this whole dynamic of what these young people are doing. It was, it was great. And to just punctuate the heartwarming, in the heartwarming category, uh, that visit that uh, Bob and John and I made welcoming the soldiers back it was you know you can see them on you can see the clips on TV all you want but it's you know it doesn't tell the story of what's really going on you see there's babies there that have never met their fathers yet and uh, it's pretty pretty exciting actually it's fun so so it's been a busy time since we last met Indeed. Yeah. I just have a couple other things here um, with the uh, holiday season upon us I did attend the street lighting which I thought was really well done And then also our Reading Community Singers Annual Christmas Concert mm. happened this past weekend, and, and that was a really terrific event to keep the season together back. So uh, this year's really well. Well, winter's not far away. The lights go up, and that snow is not far behind. Any no. <laughs> uh, comments on uh, the com oh. oh, sorry, thank you. Public comment before we proceed. Nothing tonight, Mr. Brown? You know, if I could just add one thing, um, it was my it was my week to have the hour, yes, which is named an hour. And <laughs> they try to take an hour, yeah. And I and, and and I did have some familiar visitors, but there was a there was a new visitor who came at seven, thinking he had a half hour to talk to me. Um, so I think we either got to relabel that thing, or we got to start at six. I, you know, one or the other has got to 
we, we have to fix that. It's either got to become the half hour or, or, half hour. or we, we need to start <laughs> at six. Because, I, you know, I do think it's really, uh, it's important. I mean, I've only done this a handful of times, and, uh, you know, we've had some business, so <laughs> that's good. I, I think they all work for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but, yeah. Roger. Um, a couple quick things. Um, the first one is that the Burlington Reading Ice Arena Authority recently brought in a check for $163,579. Um, we used to budget fifty dollars to $100,000 a year and hope for the best. Um, there was some back and forth, and it became clear that the money they would be able to give the town was variable, and we really shouldn't count on it. We don't want to build a budget based on it. So we put in a zero some money. Um, that's the highest they've ever contributed. Um, they had slowed down, if you will, for a couple of years as they had some capital expenses, which makes sense. Again, um, going back to Mr. Burbank's um, philosophy of setting it up is uh, it's not going to become a white elephant for the town. So they do need to run their shop. They have a super uh, director. They have a, an excellent board. They, by all accounts, run a really strong program. Um, it's not always the case that ice skating rinks, although popular everywhere, are financially profitable. This one is a little bit unusual in that regard. We need to appreciate that, and they just so happen to bring in a nice big fat check, which I think says I just appreciate it. Um, I also want to thank um, folks for last night, the summer out, the CCDC discussion. Uh, all those in the room, I certainly appreciate the, the reported well behavior. But I also want to make sure that you understand um, for a week, CPDC chair, planning staff, town council, police, and I worked very carefully to set up lots of contingencies. We didn't know what might happen. This room holds about 50. Um, facilities was gracious enough to have an alternative site set up that, that they could have moved to within 15 minutes and set up fully um, at one of the schools. So we really appreciate it was an all hands on deck kind of pitching in and making sure the bottom line was to make sure the public could be heard in a comfortable way without knowing how much public would come. So I'm glad it went well. Um, tonight we're going to close um, a warrant for a special town meeting. Uh, since you received material on Friday, a ninth warrant article has appeared. We just talked about an hour ago, town council and I. Uh, we'll get to that as we close the warrant, and we're going to discuss it in executive session later tonight. This is a petition that was in there? No, this is a uh, petition by town council. Oh. No, it's an article we need to settle some uh, sudden litigation, sudden property litigation. Um, the charter layout, and I'm not going to go over this a great deal, but I just want to let you know, um, it was a little different than I had been imagining or, or the charter committee had imagined, but town council did what I think is a brilliant job laying it out so that what is in the warrant, and, and we'll ask you to close tonight, is the entire new proposed charter in Article 7, I think it's 7. Article 8 then extracts a section of that that has to go to the legislature. So Article 8, if you will, does not really need to be discussed by town meeting. If Article 7 is approved, then Article 8 essentially has been approved. It's as if it's amended, we'll amend 8 at the same time. Um, the reason that that's, I think, excellent is because you can see the whole charter in one place. Mm -hmm. And then as a separate document and as a handout, in addition to the warrant report, folks will get a uh, translation guide that will show bol full bold and cross out from current to future with an explanation of why. It's not a huge explanation. It's a far simpler and less technical complex project than the zoning one for sure. Um, there's some very simple themes. Oh, it would have been horrible. Would not have been able to read it. We couldn't have Little afforded the postage. Would not have been able to read it. <laughs> right. No, you're people right. Wanted that, but they have no, it, you're right. Um, <laughs> and as you can see in the charter, there's a couple sections just moved. You can't follow the logic. Yeah. You just see a whole bunch of cross outs, like and then something yeah. pops in and it's new, and you don't know what changed. So you're right. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult. Um, well, let's see. I think I think that's all. The rest I'll cover in different uh, sections tonight. Do you want to walk us through that? Yes, Selectman uh, Sexton and I have met uh, 
September 4th, and you review the number of folks for different positions. We had an embarrassment of riches for the Council on Aging, three very well qualified wow. candidates. Mm -hmm. And after some discussions with Bob and Paula and the Council back and forth, uh, they've decided to create two associate positions to yeah. satisfy all three. So I'm going to be very pleased to present you with uh, the candidacy of Marilyn Chapley to the position on the Council on Aging. Uh, Marilyn is a 10-year Reading resident, uh, has an MBA and a variety of work experiences relevant to the mission of Council on Aging. Uh, and she's worked in the healthcare industry. She's uh, held management positions in financial services, which I, I think would, would serve her well uh, as a member of that board. And uh, is a certified, uh, she has a Master of Education also, has done extensive volunteer work and is very experienced in with some personal family situations as well as uh, volunteer activity with elder care. Uh, and she has been a daily visitor at Wingate and Reading, uh, seeing her dad every day. She sees that world up close and mm -hmm. personal. So mm -hmm. be very happy to uh, make the following. Uh, oh, uh, and then we had a single applicant, uh, J Jolyn Eck and Brian Snell were the other two candidates. Uh, Jolyn had, uh, I think she was previously active on Council on Aging many years ago and decided mm -hmm. to come back. Brian Snell is a uh, elder law attorney, uh, resident of Reading, who uh, actually is uh, serving in some other positions too. He'll, he'll be appointed to the Fall Street Fair Committee, but is also very interested in working with the council. Um, and then new candidates, Greg Man Mangazzini uh, applied for the West Street Historic District. Greg has an interesting perspective. He is a, an applicant, a West Street resident, who actually went through the process with the current group most uh, recently had a very positive experience and actually wanted to give, give back by serving on the group which I thought was a great testimonial to the effectiveness of that group um, and uh, Steve Goldie we did not interview but I th we felt comfortable enough just pushing his recommendation along uh, he probably had a good reason for not coming but he's a, he's a well enough known commodity I think mm -hmm. on the board that we felt comfortable and uh, Camille will be moving up to a full position on Human Relations Advisory Committee to replace an expiring seat. So I think we still have an associate position open there. So I'm going to move that the Board of Selectmen accept the recommendation of the Volunteer Appointment Subcommittee to make the following appointments. Marilyn Shapley to a position on the Council on Aging with a term expiring June 30th, 2015. Jolyn Eck and Brian Snell as associate members to the Council on Aging with terms expiring June 30th, 2015. Brian Snell to a position on the Fall Street Fair Committee with a term expiring June 30th, 2015 to fill the vacancy created by Steve Goldie's resignation. Greg Mangan Manganzini to the West Street Historic District Commission with a term expiring June 30th, 2016. Nancy Zemlack to a position on the Cultural Council with a term expiring June 30th, 2017. Stephen Goldie to a position on the Reading Community TV Board of Directors the term expiring June 30th, 2016, and Camille Anthony to a full position on the Human Relations Advisory Committee with the term expiring June 30th, 2015. I'll second that. Marcy will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion is made. Thanks for combining that, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, th I'm glad to hear that we had uh, so many qualified candidates yes. show up, and it's, a, it's really terrific to have hmm. people who are interested in serving and who end up with more people that are interested is, is really a good we thing. We do still have some very key boards that are missing members, one being CPDC. Uh, come one, come all. Yeah. Hi, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is ZBA fully staffed at this point? I think so. It yeah. is, okay. FinCom is one short. FinCom is one short. So, so for anybody out there watching, yep. if you'd like to participate instead of sit at home and watch on TV, we would be happy well, to have you. The thrill of victory. Yeah. Agony <laughs> Well, just to amplify that a little farther, Reading is blessed with an active and vibrant citizenry that wants to help and has the capability in all manner, whether it be um, Council on Aging, whether it be zoning, whether it be any one of a number of volunteer positions. And um, quite seriously, if you have an interest in these subjects, one way you can pay it back or pay it forward, depending on where you are in your, in your uh, time here at Reading, there's, there's a place for you. So I'd, I'd amplify Marcy's comments and urge you to come down and talk to our town clerk and become aware of what's available and put your name in. Um, 
We're going to move to discussion items in terms of approving licenses in your Thursday packet. We're a list of all the annual licenses, including uh, retail sales, uh, taxi, common vittlers, um, restaurants, live entertainment, et cetera. Bob, this is a formulaic discussion. This yeah, is um, there were no issues this year. There were no outstanding problems uh, from a public safety standpoint or a Board of Health standpoint. Um, the one comment I, I made to you over the weekend was um, uh, Cumberland's Farms that was asked to come back in to see right. how the early opening right. was going. They haven't done that yet. And the last I got uh, this morning, I think, was that they're shooting for March to actually do the construction because it's just too late in the season. So they won't do an early opening until sometime after the construction is done. Okay. There's no formal motion in tonight's package then? No, that's something you do. Yeah, you've delegated to yeah, me, but okay. All right. you just need to see it and be aware of it. All right. Uh, next, we'll move to closing the warrant for the January 5th special meeting. A copy of that is in page uh, 5B1 in, in Thursday's packet. Um, if, if you don't mind, um, uh, Mr. Chair, I think we'll spend a little bit of time. We've, the hearing isn't until 8 o'clock, so we can't start that early. Oh, thank you. So I'll go over the warrant in, in a fair amount of detail. I wasn't sure how fast we'd run or not. Um, thank you. First order business will be figuring out the technology. Um, as I mentioned, there's nine warrant articles. Um, I have a full copy of the warrant article report, as opposed to the warrant, which is a subset of that. It's about yay thick. It was um, wordsmithed from the version you got over the weekend. I had many little elves over the weekend looking at it. Um, several of them work on the charter committee. Uh, in, in, in particular, no, you don't have email, so. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not coming to, vi to visit me on a Sunday. You've got a tin can with a string. <laughs> right. So I want to particularly call out and thank um, Peg Russell, was very helpful. Oh, she great. sent me five pages of typos. Oh, my goodness. Now, they were five pages because she really made it clear that I saw the whole paragraph and exactly where it was. And she found things that no human eye can see. Mm. I don't know how she found it. There was a word T-H-E. She said the E is capitalized. It was. You can't spell check that. You couldn't even see no. that. I don't know how she figured it out. <laughs> but, you know, it was really very helpful to get that level of detail. That doesn't mean there's no mistakes, but it means it's the best um, humanly effort possible, I think. Um, let me show you just visually what the um, articles look like. Article 1 is reports. Um, we do have a request from last night from the FinCom chair to give an update on the uh, investigation on procurement. I, it's the only one I'm aware of. Instructional motions, uh, Mr. Brown may give one. He always does. Um, <laughs> other than that, I'm not aware. Amending the capital plan, we um, have that generally at every, uh, at every town meeting. Um, we have a formula where we have these first three articles always. And town council asked me why, and I said, well, it's in some charter or bylaw or something. He says, no, it's not. But as far as I know, we've done this for 25 years. So in the future, we can start talking about what do we really want to put in the warrant, because we can do whatever we want. Um, in this case, we do need to do capital, so it's in there. I don't see any reason to have it as an article if you're not doing it, though. So we'll talk about that in the future. Um, there will be a handful of $50,000 worth of capital requested. Uh, likewise, in Article 4, we're amending the budget. Some of that will be capital. Some of that will be uh, uh, town council. Um, I'm forgetting one thing. Some of it is paying class money moving around, and there's one other thing that I'll get to when we uh, go over the, the whole report. Um, <clears throat> the bylaw change on firearms, you have a discussion scheduled tonight. Um, where it was petitioned and where the discussion tonight hadn't happened yet, the bylaw committee last night decided to take no action. Depending on the outcome of tonight, um, they may or may not meet before the town meeting and take some action. If you think of their position, it's a real tough call. What do they say? What do they do? They know town council has ruled that it is legal to do what is being suggested. It, 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 it is sound law. What they would like to ask town council is, does it accomplish what the uh, residents want? I said, I don't even know how town council can answer that. I'm not even sure the residents can answer I, that. I don't know that we know what they want. <coughs> right. right. So I said, you know, we're all kind of in an awkward position. If this was a town-sponsored article, we'd have much better answers. I'd say, well, this is what is it intended by the board or by the, you know, a board or committee or, or by staff. But we really need the residents to speak to that at town meeting, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so town council will be at town meeting, obviously, and can do the best he can. But I don't know that the bylaw committee is going to be able to set, say much. Before you go any further, Bob, yeah. that, that underscores a point we've made before <clears throat> about the bylaw committee, which is it, it's fortuitous this is one of those articles that makes the point for us. What should their sandbox look like? What right. function should right. that group play on a going forward basis? It's not at all. And they defined. had an interesting discussion about that last night because they understand kind of both endpoints. And as a group, I'd say they're more towards the strict constructionist method now mm -hmm. as opposed to in the past, but not all of them are there. Yeah. Some of them wish to give personal opinions, and they do understand they could do it as a town meeting member. Um, you know, but they understand the discussion, and they generally respect the fact that the um, majority of town meetings seems to want them to give um, advice on the construct of a bylaw and not their opinion as to whether it's a good bylaw or not. But it's certainly a fair question to ask town council, is the construct of this accomplishing, you know, the goal of, of the petitioners? And again, we don't know. One of them had done quite a bit of research on the state law and said, I don't think they understand fully what they've done. I don't think it's going to accomplish very much at all. But again, that's kind of out of our, out of our hands. <clears throat> Article 6 is to set up the permanent building committee you referenced earlier. Um, there's a nice draft. They were uh, the bylaw committee was charged last uh, February special town meeting with doing this. Um, they were good about reaching out to both the superintendent and I to get advice or suggestions, and we gave them quite an earful. Um, they had initially proposed a three hundred fifty thousand dollars spending limit above which the building committee would come in on anything to do with facilities, and, and both. Uh, Dr. Doherty and I said that's not the spirit of what was intended. Although you better check with. Barry Berman on that. Um, I don't think the intention was capital expenses to do routine maintenance and repairs was really the mission. And as an example, we've already um, done and approved almost $900,000 of current year roof repair for one school building. So, and, and I looked at the capital plan and there were some other roof repairs that were over a million dollars. So I suggested two million. Um, the committee members had a real internal debate and still are not unanimous about that. There's a lot of range of opinions on that, as there are a range of opinions on FinCom. There are some people that do want to have a loan number, and they do want, if you will, the building committee to butt into facilities. But I don't think that was the spirit of what town meeting expected, and we'll find that out in January. You know, I don't know. Uh, an interesting example came up, um, it was in the, one of the western suburbs. They have a permanent building committee that looks at anything that's $25,000. So talk about, yeah, talk about uh, operational interference. <laughs> but no, that's, that, much, that's, 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 that's much more a, it's a cross check a, it's on a operation a oversight. Yeah, or, or absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I think, is a separate issue from what we're what trying to solve. The spirit of what yeah. I thought. Uh, I, I thought so. That, you know? and yeah. It's furthermore, I think, when you, when you think about recruiting to that committee, if they're going to need to be, if it's at a low threshold, And the skill sets that you'd need. And I think it'll make it difficult to really get high caliber yeah, people right. to step into that. Uh, and it washes down what what you really want to accomplish with that, which is to have major oversight on those large projects. Yeah, right. Not professional people that you know are recruited that committee right. who have professional experience mm -hmm. to assist well meaning other committees right. that, you know, have kind of put this project forward. Yeah. I think we're in violent agreement. <laughs> <laughs> the text is, is behind me up on the screen. Um, I just want to point for, out a couple of things. For all that that helps. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. Um, the committee is suggested to be five permanent members. And then any time a specific project comes to them, whoever is proposing it can add two members. So there's seven. There's also language in here allowing flexibility that if, if some someone with a lot of money wants to pay us some portion of it, such as the SBA for schools, there is a potential of adding two more and having a maximum of nine. But the thinking being that the five, if you will, permanent long-standing members always have a majority vote. That's important. There was some discussion last night, and there may be an amendment offered by one of the bylaw committee members to change some of this. Um, but he's going to do research for another month, and we'll see. He's, he's thinking about the flexibility of 
not having a limit of nine, but having the voting members cut down to a smaller number like seven. So there's all kinds of permutations. There's no easy solution to it, Dan. Is there any term specified for the uh, other two to four members? That was kind of um, It's three-year terms on a staggered basis. That's for the five. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's silent on that. I think it is silent on that. I so think it's, it's project specific. It's probably worthwhile to have a sunset on that because it's hard to say yeah. when a building ends, right? You, when the paint goes up and the lights go yeah, on? Yeah, it's, you know, it's easy. Let's imagine I want a new town hall. I go to the building committee and say I want a town hall building committee. They add two members. Okay, or we do. Um, we discuss it for 53 years. I mean, you know, <laughs> what is what is the end point? What is the, the, the mission? I don't know. That seems peaceful. It is open. It's not something I thought of. It's, it's not something that we discussed. Uh, and if you think historically, um, some building projects in Reading have taken many years to discuss. Uh, yeah. If we were going to put any kind of uh, sunset or term on the other members, uh, would that have to go into the language as we close it, or? No, it's okay. That, that's a that's a within the four corners amendment okay. that I'm sure I'm sure is fine. It would be long somewhere in this paragraph. Yeah, I one, one, after Ward Smith tonight. Well, nope. One simple way is to say it's that those ad hoc members be renewed annually. Yeah, that, in that's position. a typical right. structure, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was thinking about that's that. Fine. And that way, it, it's automatic, and it times out. And again, um, there's the limit, $2 million. We wanted to make it clear that this does not extend to the jurisdiction of the light department. That seemed to be the pretty clear intent of the former FinCom chair. Right. We actually asked him. Um, I have not heard this from him, but a member on the um, FinCom has heard from him that he thinks $2 million is too high. So again, we'll have a discussion at town meeting floor. Um, that can be amended downward. It can. It can be amended down or up. Oh, all right. Either way. Um, and importantly, the, the appointment committee is the um, chairman of the school committee, chairman of the selectmen, and the moderator, regardless of the project. Seems Those are the most common entities that would, would build a building. And um, this, this stuff at the bottom um, was initially suggested as, I'll, I'll use the word, very interfering. And, and, you know, it's, it's kind of not my problem, it's the facilities department's problem, but they really did want to climb into uh, the facility's operation and show them how to run it. Mm. I didn't think that was the spirit of what you know, no. was intended, and I also didn't think it would be helpful. So they, they backed off the language significantly once we had a, a long discussion over a couple months and uh, just have this last paragraph, how they'll work with the facilities director uh, to compile an inventory of the condition of buildings. And that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, you know, we remember we heard, uh, I'm going to say three years ago, about Killam. Killam was in urgent need of $5 million of repairs. There was no funding. Does that mean it's no longer urgent because we didn't do it? This neutral group, if you will, will have a look at all the town's buildings and the schools and just say, ABC, this is, um, you know, the condition of the building and this is what we should be planning on. Does it overlap with facilities? Yeah, a little bit need a roof or whatever but really this is meant to be in my estimation a big repair to a building a big addition to a building or a whole new building from scratch that no one has thought about is it the goal there that they're going to create an annual report to the governing body so it yes says uh, yeah they right here at the end an annual report to town meeting right. they had it. suggested biannual and read that so well. yeah I, I, I said that. <laughs> biannual it was either twice a year or once every two years and the committee was two two split in that so they said, let's do annual. Doesn't that, doesn't that raise the potential of being in conflict with, say, the capital plan, which is where all the trades are made in terms of what's achievable and what's reasonable? Well, and this is done without any confines of what's affordable and, and the important and the urgent. I see it being in conflict. With it, it is in conflict, if you will, with FinCom's role to some degree. But FinCom seemed fine with it last night. Isn't it more informational than... It could be, but it, it could, could be, but instructional. I mean, let me turn it around. If the report is, it's to summarize their findings, which means it has all the natural human assessments that we all make about what's important and what's less important. And I'm just fearful that we already have that baked into a capital plan. We're going to do a roof here. We're going to do a parking lot renewal here. That's kind of already the horse trading has been done. Sorry, the the economic trades where it fits in the plan. That's already been done and it's been leveled. This runs the risk, I think, of then trying to at town meetings floor, say, well, wait a minute, that's all wrong. We had to do it this way. And now you're into 
having that discussion on town meeting when it's really not, you can't do it there. I think of this group as looking more strategically at all the buildings that we have across, and that has to go into a capital plan, but the capital plan itself isn't necessarily the strategic plan, I don't think. One, of, I mean, one of the things that FinCom talked about was, you know, we had early childhood education, library renovation, public work. We have these different big things that are all just bring, brought forward independently with nobody looking at how all those things interact that and makes sense. how they impact it's, us. The language here goes anticipated repairs and renovations. Yeah. There's no dollar amount on that to limit And, the and they wanted that to have no dollar amount, and that's, that uh, is an argument. So is their report going to spit out what the capital plan already says, or is Correct. it going to contradict it? Correct. So it's I don't $2 know. Million, it's unless it's one of those, in which case it's first dollar. Right. Well, That's the problem. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so maybe, maybe <laughs> there's a good amendment on the floor to, uh, to adjust to uh, avoid that conflict. I, I just am <laughs> very wary of creating a structure that's automatically a conflict with another right. operating branch. That, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I talked about the charter, again, just to sort of visually show you. Um, we'll go over the entire charter in Article 7. We don't have the authority to change the whole charter in Article 7. So the motion will actually just limit it to the sections that we have authority over. And those, if approved by town meeting, those will go along to the voters. I've listed a whole bunch of people to do reports. Um, I don't know who has an interest in giving a report. But I listed all the elected boards. Um, the Board of Assessors have a rather lengthy written report in the warrant report. It's, it's a couple pages. I don't know if they'll want to stand up and say it. But certainly the biggest, to me, the biggest charter change suggested is them to be appointed, not elected, and they're incredibly strongly supportive of that. Um, they can, in, in the current three members, only one of them has ever had uh, more than uh, 30 or 40 votes to get there. <laughs> and they just think it's hard to find uh, the technical skills uh, for the position. And another thing that's um, worth mentioning is by changing from elected to appointed, that opens up the possibility that the Board of Selectmen, who will be the appointing authority, could appoint a non-resident. And it's very common practice in the trade, for ill or, or not, that the uh, appraiser is on the Board of Assessors, and our appraiser doesn't live in Reading, and our, and our appraiser has never lived in Reading from the last three I could think of or four. So that's interesting. Um, the other thing that has come up a little bit more in the last uh, week or so since we reviewed the charter, just so you know, is um, associate members, and you appointed a couple tonight. Right now, the only, well, right now you can kind of do what you want. If the charter is passed as proposed and it goes into effect, let's say, by next July 1st, technically you will not be able to have these associate positions unless there's a bylaw that says you can. So we may quickly have to follow this up with bylaws that say it's okay to have associates. But what the Charter Committee, and, and Bill, feel free to, to jump in because a lot of this happened before I joined, was to give a little more form and structure and not just willy-nilly appoint associates for whatever reason you do, to really uh, let it happen. And, and, and more importantly, in, in addition to making the appointing authority think about it, to uh, allow the associate members to vote. Right now they can't. Mm -hmm. Um, there, the charter will allow that unless it's in conflict with state law. What is the so what's the point of having exactly. an associate They can vote then? in the absence of a standing member okay. if yeah. they've attended like, like the, the session. Yeah. They can't vote in the first 180 <coughs> days, is it? Yeah, 120. 120, yeah. okay. What's the purpose of the 120 day delay? Uh, we just didn't feel that, and I think right. the sense of the board was that uh, we just didn't want somebody stacking the deck at the last moment, let's say one way or the other in an article. And this was brought out, I think, by Ginny Adams. She came to the Charter Commission, the Charter Review Committee and asked me this because of the incident on 186 uh, mm -hmm. Summer Avenue. If they hadn't had the uh, tele telephone conference and they wouldn't have had a uh, quorum, mm -hmm. and it would have, by default, they could have done what they wanted. So that was the reason she asked for it. And we, again, we felt that 120 days, uh, it could be less, but uh, we felt the 120 days was good because in that incidence, let's say three members of the board of selectmen said, gee, we like this person because they're going to vote the way we want. Oh, for sure. We, you know, we, we wanted to take that concept out of it. In other words, we wanted somebody who's going to be there for right. 120 days before they had an opportunity to vote. And I think that's reasonable. 
Bob, if I understood you, this has got to be the support in the charter, sorry, the language in the charter has got to be supported by the language in the bylaw to allow the associate members to, to come to pass. Correct. The uh, language in the, in the charter says, as long as the charter or a bylaw or a vote of town meeting supports the associate membership existing, it doesn't exist by default. All right, so but what may happens exist. to current associate memberships that are in place? We'll have to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, do we want to bring, it's a timing issue, it's a tricky one. I don't know that we'll be in a position to bring a bylaw to annual town meeting to fix this because the charter won't have been approved yet, most right. likely. Mm -hmm. Right. We could always put a placeholder in and, and do the best we can. We may have to finesse it for the first few months and just sort of say, you know, you're an unofficial mm -hmm. associate member. So now, we, we appointed two of those tonight. Right. So <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm told you may need them in an official capacity soon. So. Um, and, and another thing, I think this come somewhat makes it legal what you're already doing. Yeah, I think I that's think, right. Uh, it becomes transparent. Let's put it that way. Yeah. We love transparency. Yeah, and the one our, uh, zone, zoning board of appeals is one issue where it, it's really important because they right. do have associates that that can vote, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's, that's state law, mm -hmm. right? So the the construct is why not allow? Mm -hmm. you know, they didn't suggest associates for elected boards, but if you had a selectman, you have an absence, the poor guy. Um, yeah. You know, you have an important issue. If someone's been going as associate member, they're well informed. You know, let them express their opinion. CBDC case in point, there were three in the forum last night. If uh, yeah. any one of those fails to show on the 12th, I think right. we have a defect in the hearing probably. Yeah. Um, the second charter article will have already really been discussed and possibly amended, and I believe it's really more of a formality. It's just picking out things from the first article that don't belong there and sending them to the legislature as a special act. So can you go through the path to approval for, for both articles 7 and 8? Um, <clears throat> Seven goes to, to you tonight, to town meeting if you approve it, uh, to the uh, attorney general after you approve it, mm -hmm. uh, and to the voters. The entirety of all the material in Seven goes to the voters? Or uh, just only the m ones that are in the motion. So there'll be, okay. all these sections down here will be excluded. Oh, not the amendment. How we present it to the voters, don't ask me. That's, oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's, I think we have to do it by U.S. mail. Mm. Yeah, so That's going to be a nightmare. I'd rather give them the whole charter. Mm. And again, mm. right. look at the language about, you know, we're not asking you to approve this section. But that's that's a nightmare for another night. Um, and the voters, you know, do or don't approve it. Um, okay, what's what's goes. not clear is, will the AG act on it before or after the voters? It's up to the AG. No. Mm -hmm. um, you would like to think that you'd get AG approval and then go to the voters? You can't guarantee that. It just goes to the legislature and not to the voters. Um, eight goes, again, you, town meeting, and then the legislature. Um, they could act as soon as 30 days. They could take as long as six months. We just don't know. We'll ask them for whatever we need. Um, a sec, Bill. The state legislature can instruct that the town bring it to the voters, which will not happen this spring if they do. There's no way that can work. Odds are based on what we think is in here and being requested, they probably won't do that, but they could. Um, if the special ask is passed and it doesn't have to go to the voters, it's, it's effective immediately. So one nuance in this, and Marcy will appreciate, appreciate this from, from zoning, is there's two sets of things going forward at an unpredictable pace. One of them might be approved first, or the other might be approved first. How do we deal with the charter when it's in this state of limbo? So we think we've addressed that. We didn't do as much in the sections going to the special act. Two of them are changing numbers, so we had to be really careful with them. Yeah. But we tried to be careful and not change as much as possible. But it's a really difficult thing because of the two very different paths and the unpredictable outcomes. And then this last Article 9, I want to show you the exact language. I'll read it. <clears throat> to see if the town will vote pursuant to Section 5.2 of the Reading General Bylaws, which you should have tonight, to approve and authorize the Board of Selectmen to settle potential litigation involving the Sutton Brook Disposal Area Superfund site, involving the possible payment of a sum more than $50,000 or take any action relating thereto. Um, so what this does, I, I got something, I think it was on December 4th, as did Town Council. 
Uh, we'll discuss some details in executive session, but it literally dropped out of the clear blue sky. Can you tell us what Sutton Brook disposal area is? Um, I'll tell you in executive okay. session. Um, and again, we need to put this as a placeholder. Town meeting would give you the authorization to do it, and we'll we'll put a free cash um, number on the fund uh, on the article at the floor. It's it's probably unlikely that at the night of town meeting when this comes up that the, that we will know that we do want to settle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This this will only give the board the authority to continue yeah. to have that discussion. Um, you need to have that, that ability to, to settle because there is a legal deadline that has been extended just beyond the January town meeting for our benefit. Mm. Um, but again, sh is it something we should settle or not? Town council hasn't decided, nor have I on that, and okay. we'll, you know, we'll discuss that with you. This just allows for flexibility in January. And that's, that's the warrant. So there's nine articles uh, in your motion. Any public comment? Mr. Brown. Uh, one of the articles is going to the state legislature. Silly so to think, see, the present charter says 28 days, I think, before. Yes, they have uh, this. 35, we're changing to 28. No, is that right? The, the other, other way, way around? around? Yeah. Okay. The charter president says 28 days, but state mm, law that's right. says it has to be 35. We couldn't change it. It has to go to the state <laughs> to, to correct their own stupid mistake. So mistakes. we can follow state so, law. Uh, and <laughs> They, they, it's up to the legislature to decide whether it comes back to the boards or not. And for all of the uh, simplicity of what we're doing, I don't think there'll be that might happen, especially yeah, to put a so. little pressure on our. And, and all this is happening because we had a charter committee, not a charter commission. Um, I don't know that that mattered. It's because we're dealing with election law. If you look at this, it's, it's constitutional law. Yeah, if you look at the sections. Uh, town meeting, elected positions, uh, town manager, which is an executive position, as well as acting town manager, and then election material. And just to be clear, um, town council widened the net on this as wide as he felt he could, because if the AG strikes down something in the prior article because it should have been here, their whole thing is toast. Yeah. So he said, I took every possible thing that the AG might, after having several discussions with him, so even from when we discussed it, he added in 5.1, which is town manager. He said, I don't think they're going to care, but we better do it that way. Yeah. But so. didn't the Charter Commission in 1983 act on all those matters? Um, it went up and needed to have any legislature involved? Yes, but I don't know how the legislature did get involved. Did you go to the voters? I assume it went right, to the right voters. From that commission to the voters. Yeah, if yeah. you form a commission and it takes two years instead of shorter, which is elected, you yeah. do short circuit the state okay. legislative so special act process. Yeah, but I don't know that it's always cost. true. Right. I, it can be true, and it was true. Okay. okay, very good. Any other comments from the board members? Um, I'd be. What's the sense about taking a position on uh, well, each? We, we can do that case. later. Yeah. Okay. Are there are other comments. We'll entertain an article. Yeah. Move to that the board of selectmen close the warrant consisting of nine articles for the special town meeting to take place on January fifth, two thousand fifteen, at the Reading Memorial High School at seven thirty p.m. Second. Well, I see a little second. Any further discussion? Yeah. Just so. one. I just a point of clarification. So, any of these that we by closing these, it doesn't change anything about our ability to be able to take a position. Oh no, that's nothing to do, do with that. that you know, the, that's a kind of a two-step Those are two different things. Correct. Correct. Yep. I'm interested okay. in doing that as well, but no, we're just yeah. vetting that these items are, are on the warrant. Just okay. Correct. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion? 4-0. Okay. Now do we want to take a posture with regard to... Um, do you want to do, do that now or do you want to wait? Uh, up to you. Well, I mean, some of these, at least one of these, is a topic that we're going to open a discussion on yeah. later. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we so should have that discussion before we... I do, too. Let's, let's, uh, uh, I, let's I, I know there's people here that uh, want to speak to that. So. Uh, actually, I prefer to go through this. I think this. they might be joining us now. <laughs> I prefer to go through this and then roll into the hearing. Um, all those in favor of... Uh, I'm going to roll through these one by one. All those in favor of uh, Article 1. Um, well, I, I suggest you vote at the end, if you don't mind. Um, just because you have people here. Or just one of the articles, I understand. But 
there's, there's no sense in breaking that up, I don't think. Okay. And it's it being eight o'clock, we can start the hearing now. Please. Go back to that. Please take notice that the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Reading will hold a public hearing on December 9th, 2014 at 8 o'clock p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, to approve the results of the Fiscal Year 15 Compensation and Classification Study. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic is available in the Town Manager's Office, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Tuesday from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m and is attached to the hearing notice on the website at www.readingma.gov. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 6 p.m. on December 9, 2014 to town manager at ci.reading.ma.us. Thank you, Dan. Bob? Thank you. Um, this, this will follow along um, very simply on page 30 of your tonight's packet. There's the... Um, subject matter of what I'm asking you to approve. I, I tried to circle positions that were changing just to help it clarify, and I missed two of them. I blame Paula for that. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Um, in grade K, technology director is suggested to be upgraded, and in grade B, library technician. And this presentation will go into you know some level of detail and all that, but just visually, I thought it would be helpful for you to have that in your, in your handout. Um, I'll do this quickly. It'll probably take 15 to 20 minutes, which will put us about on schedule. Um, the board uh, may or may not know all the details, so I'll, I'll try to strike a, a happy medium. We hired a consultant, Donald Tyler, from HRP Partners up in Maine, to uh, take a look at our internal equity and our external pay, and I'll define those shortly, of our non-union staff. <laughs> Reading is unusual as a municipality in that we have a lot of non-union staff. Um, most municipalities have far more unions and percentage of union people than we do. So um, this is, you know, it would be important area anyways, but it's even more important because of the dominating numbers of staff that we have. What's important from the consultant, and this is from his presentation, the first couple slides, um, we're dealing with attract, att attracting and retaining competent staff ensuring that your salaries paid are competitive in the marketplace and equitable internally, if you can ever figure that out, um, and really providing a framework where internally we don't have to hire a consultant every year, internally we can do it, and then just look outside every five or ten years as we need to. So that's a summary of that. There was four steps to this process, the way I viewed it. We're at the end of step four, or just about. Um, part one, all the non-union staff spent quite a bit of time filling out intense questionnaires. I can't remember how large they were, but they are large. They work with our HR administrator in the back, uh, Judy, and, and worked with the consultant to get a good job description so that he understood what the position was, not what the person did, but what the position required the person to do. So this is all analysis of positions. The next thing he did was survey 25 to 26 communities. He used the FinCom list of communities and he added two or three more onto that and then collected whatever information he got. Um, it, the process is a little slower than I would have liked because he waited to get good data and in the long run he was right. He got about 20 responses, which was excellent. Um, he got the first seven quickly and then it was slow after that. But I, I don't know what he did, but he muscled people into answering. And it's a lot of work to answer one of these. He then took part one and part two and as an artist he put them together. He said. I have internal equity, I have external pay, what kind of souffle do I make, here it is. And I'll get into that. I then stepped in uh, into part four and I'll describe kind of where we are and what happened. For internal equity, he looked at eight factors. I won't read them, but you can see what they are. The pay and class study we did six years ago had, a, I think it was 11 or 12 factors, similar idea, same, same basic idea. He did not reveal to us how he weighted those factors, but he had a system. Um, you know, it's proprietary. And when he cranked it all through the formula and looked at all the positions, he came up with um, almost 80 positions rated, if you will, or scored from 150 to almost 900. And here's just a count of the number of positions and sort of where they lay. To look a little bit more sort of statistically at it, 
there's 30 FTEs that are in the 150 to 300 range, and then there's 20 and a couple groups of 10, and not surprisingly, perhaps department heads at the top. Um, the six department heads gives me a pause to mention to you that there were some positions not scored, mostly because they were empty or because he didn't like the questionnaire responses and could never really get through uh, some of them. So the empty department head position is not scored. I scored it based on his methods, and it's in that range for what it's worth. And then I just show you by department, and I think it's important um, when you think about this project to understand that DPW and public safety are the union shops. So they're very different as departments than the, the other four, which are all non-union. So for instance, in DPW, there's some clerical positions, and then there's a fair amount of management positions that are non-union. So it's not the least bit surprising to me to see that by internal equity they would score higher because everyone in the middle doesn't count their union. So that just show you kind of how that lays out. Now we get to the external pay, which was really very disappointing, I have to say. Um, the consultant studied four data points in the market from the 20 communities. He did an average. He doesn't reveal any individual communities' numbers, just the average. He gave us entry-level pay, top-step pay, and midpoint pay for a, a position, a published range. And then he gave us incumbent pay in the position if there was one. So if you think about it, that's two different kinds of data. One is theoretical, right. and then one is practical. Right. They don't always match. Mm -hmm. um, he observed that in Reading, our, our range from top to bottom is on the small side. So what that told me was when I looked at his data, I want to look at the midpoint, because everyone's midpoint is a midpoint. I don't have to worry about the fact that the, you know, the highs and the lows don't match if I look at the midpoint. Um, this is a chart of all those positions. And this actually is FTE weighted, which I think is the most valuable. And it shows, and it's a little hard to see, but this line right here of 100 means all the positions to the right of this and above it are grayed out, if you will, higher than the market survey average. It means these positions in Reading, the midpoint in Reading is higher than the midpoint of the average in the communities. And then all these ones here are lower. So it's a pretty wide range more than I would have thought. Uh, it went from, uh, you know, 17% over to 24% below. Yeah. So two-thirds of our employees are below that? Um, that looks like about, that looks like it's about right, uh, John. If you average it, and when you average it, that's going to include all these as pluses, negating some of this and offsetting some of these minuses. Um, the pay yeah, range is... You look at that chart, you actually see people right. instead yes. of averages. Uh, you see FTEs, so yes. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, which I think is the more telling chart. Right. right. The averages kind of discount the individual. And, and the average also, the structure of our pay is 4 to 6 percent below the average. Yeah. Okay. So if we're going to fix it, does that mean everyone who's above 100 is going to be having money taken away? As a practical matter, I think that would be difficult. <laughs> um, so it means to correct everyone who's below 100 would be more than 4 or 6 percent, you know, simply put. And again, by department, you know, the numbers just lay out this way. And again, it's FTE weighted. Uh, remembering that DPW and public safety are a little different. The library scored well. Uh, they're the only department that scored above average. Um, community service is in finance. We're really towards the caboose of that train, if you will. Bob, are we built any different than any other towns in that we have more? Um, <clears throat> we're, we're built differently in that we try to do everything with as little as possible. Um, That's the, clear. The, the example that always comes up um, is planning. I had a breakfast this morning with five other towns. One of them just hired their first planner in, I think, ever, and they have one planner. They said, if Reading can do it, we can do it. It's much more typical to have zero planners or four planners or three or four planners. If you're going to do it, you got to be all in and do it. So Reading tries to do all those things with as little staff as possible generally. Um, the one area that we have very good staffing by size, not by quality, is that's good in a lot of places. And Kevin and Dan heard this last week in the volunteer appointment. 
was uh, Elder Human Services. Um, one of the volunteers who was looking to be appointed especially said, I'm a social worker, I work in eight communities including Reading, and I have to tell you, Reading is light years above all the other seven in terms of services offered, volume of services offered, and quality of services. So Reading is built a little differently. Um, we actually provide a fairly wide range of services to the community. So what do we do? Put a number on that, um, on, on bringing that scatter chart into right here. Going to, okay. <laughs> um, he he suggested the consultant suggested we go somewhere between ten and thirteen grades. We have thirteen now. He wanted to change the distance between the grades. We're ten percent between all of them. He said some of them should be five, some of them should be fifteen, and you should probably have more steps. I looked at what he suggested. It was impossible to implement any fraction of it. Well, it was impossible to implement any fraction of it with the money we had. To implement his whole thing would have cost between four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. We had seventy-five. So I looked at every way to try to take a first step using his method, and I couldn't do it. It was just mathematically impossible. So I went back and I asked him, and I said, "Look." Your, your new first task is, given that we have a certain amount of money and it doesn't matter to you how much, take our existing framework and tell me what positions need to be upgraded, period. Mm -hmm. And I told the department heads, whatever that answer is, that's what I'll bring to you and that's what we'll bring to town meeting. It, it so happened it was a little more than 75000 but it's manageable. And then I said, your second new step becomes, given what you just did, what's the long-term objective here to fix this? And he hasn't come back with that. He may repeat the first thing he showed me. He may revise it. It's up to him. We'll know in uh, probably by the end of December or into January. So the process is now split into two parts, if you will. Um, one is the thing in front of you for January town meeting to be done in this fiscal year, and that fixes a portion of the problem. And one of it is a longer-term issue we'll have to deal with in future budgets, quite honestly. Bob, how much yeah. of this, how much of what you just explained to us will be explained to town meeting. As much or as little as you think we should. I mean... Well, I just think, you know, it's enlightening to... I hadn't really planned on it, but it's probably not a bad idea. I mean, it's... That's very enlightening information. I think it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's... If town meeting is going to think about how... Because it's a problem. It's got to yeah, be solved. It is a problem. I mean, you've, you've assigned the consultant to come up with a solution. I, you know, if I was the consultant, I think I'd come back and go, I think I already gave you the solution. Um, yeah, he may. And I think he did. You know, maybe yeah. he finds it on a staging cycle that, you know, uh, is a little, it's more bite-sized. But, uh, yeah, that's I, up to I him. mean, the answer is the answer. Right. And I think that it's really important for town meeting to understand the gravity of that situation. In some, yeah. so in in a, you know, in, in a fairly simple, straightforward way, like we just saw. I met with three different groups of uh, non-union employees today, and I'm going to guess between a half and two thirds of the total force was in one of those meetings. And I said, you know, we have two issues here. A very important issue, and probably the most important issue, certainly in the short run, is your issue is right in front of us all, and we need to fix it. But I said, with all due respect, the other part of the issue is this organization cannot continue forever with this kind of a structure. Right. We see it, you know, we're trying to hire people. Um, any one of you that's done that knows it's a lot different hiring a 20-year-old nowadays than it used to be. Um, the world is running out of the kind of employees that work here for the town of Reading. Very loyal, very long-standing, very hard-working. Um, if you don't mind me saying, not a traditional government employee in many regards. They have skin in the game. They have they absolute skin in the game. They're not here for the money. Um, but do you want this to be a problem where when they all leave and we try to replace them, then we deal with it? Or do you want to deal with it bite size along the way? Those are the choices. And, I, you know, clearly my choice is deal with it now. It's, it, it will be worse. It absolutely will be worse. To do it the other way. And we did a study six years ago. We took a first step towards fixing it. We couldn't afford steps two and three. The problem got worse. Mm -hmm. Not surprising. Well, we took <laughs> yeah. that first step and then the governor cut the budget. Absolutely. So we right. ran into rocky roads. I remember that. And, yeah. and interestingly enough, other cities and towns found ways to not 
not cut employee pay. I don't know how. <laughs> you know, less employees. Um, this just gives you a little look. Uh, of not quite a third of the non-union uh, people will be affected by this. We have and, ha and have a real issue in our clerical staff of underpaying them, so a good chunk of the money goes towards clerical staff, but it's spread all over the organization, if you will. As a group, FTE weighted, this group was 13% under the average of pay in the midpoint, so this will help them the most. But to be very clear, the other 70% that are not helped at all at January Town Meeting, the majority of those are still in distress of some sort. We're talking about only solving a problem to a midpoint. It's not like Correct. we suddenly are saying, okay, we want to create the highest paid or the, no. you know, we want to make it yeah. the most attractive place to come. We're just talking about coming up to, yeah. kind of coming up to average. Which is standard management yeah. practice. It'll, yeah. it'll be exhausting to try to get us to average. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're right. I, that message is really important. Yeah. Uh, that there's clarity around that. You know, I, I think I, I speak for the entire community that we expect top quartile performance out of all of our employees. That's just what Reading expects. And by and large, it's delivered. Um, go to other communities around, as some of you have, and, and listen to the stories. Reading is held up as a model in a lot of ways. People work you know, well in this town. They work hard. It's a pretty hard message to say we want top quartile or better performance, and by the way, we're not even willing to pay an average. Mm -hmm. At the very least, let's pay them average. And you know, our workforce by and large is, is fine with that. A lot of them live in Reading. They used to live in Reading. Their family lives in Reading. They love Reading. They're not in it for the money. It's, it's something if, you know, they wanted to make more money, they could. Um, but as they leave, it's, it's embarrassing that we can't replace good people at the same price that they left. We can't even come close in some instances. That tells you it's an organizational problem that we do need to fix. And I know to some degrees the schools have run into this in the last couple of years mm -hmm. with some of their teachers. I was just going to segue into that. Yeah, yeah, for the first time, they're seeing turnover because of money. Mm. Good. And we, ha and we have too. <laughs> so um, lastly, and that's the chart in front of you, here's the position list, if you will, that's um, requested to be upgraded. Uh, and then some new positions are created, too, that were resulting from this study. And then the water quality coordinator, it's just handy we're doing this hearing because of, we have a retirement coming up in February, and we're going to suggest his position be downgraded a couple grades because it's a fellow who used to manage staff and supervise a water treatment plant. Well, he hasn't had one of those for a couple of years, so the replacement position will be a, a lower cost one. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Okay, the discussion. If not, we'll go right to the motion. Okay. Sure. Any other discussion? Board no. members? Do okay. you have the public? Okay. Any public comment? Okay, uh, move to uh, close the hearing on the results of the fiscal year 15 compensation and classification plan study. Do I have a second? Second. John will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Four zero. Move with the Board of Selectmen approve the amendments to the FY15 compensation and classifications classification plans as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? 4 0. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next on agenda tonight is a uh, discussion on the ch proposed change in bylaw re regarding firearms. Uh, a petition has been submitted to the town and an article placed on the town warrant to propose a change in bylaws to uh, how firearms are, are, to, are to be used in the town. Um, it's by petition, which means there is no um, public hearing. That's the intent of tonight, really, to serve in that capacity so we can get the full measure of feedback from the town. Um, the subject matter of the article, Bob is steering to it now. I guess it's Article 5. Right. Uh, and the proposed change deletes the last sentence in the current bylaw, as you see on the whiteboard, such that uh, it strikes the, um, I guess, the current exclusion of the bylaw as it relates to um, owners of le or lessees of land uh, as it relates to hunting and fishing. 
Or hunting and sporting, I should say. I guess you can't fish with a gun, at least not yet. <laughs> you can. It's not very sporting. Uh, this board has talked about this at, uh, at some length, and uh, there being a fairly large uh, group in front of us, unless the board has any objection, I'd like to go right to the public discussion. Bob? Just if I can give folks in the audience a little background. Sure. Um, this was proposed for a November town meeting, kind of at the last minute. Um, and what wasn't known at the time was, did it affect other property? We knew it affected a piece of land in the middle of Timberneck Swamp, but was there others? Town meeting in November, you know, partly, certainly majority of reason, without that information, didn't want to proceed and said, you know, find it out, bring it back. The board had intended to bring it back next April, but a bunch of residents, as is certainly their right, um, struck up a petition and brought it back sooner. So it's going in the first week of January to a special town meeting. So we haven't been able to do quite as much homework as we would have liked for April, but we've been adequately prepared and, and certainly will be ready for January. Um, all of you are notified because you are within hailing distance and own land that could be affected by this bylaw if, if you got a letter in the mail. Did get a letter? No. no. Okay. My neighbors didn't get the letter. A lot of people got letters if they were within a certain distance of land. I am. I am. Where do you live? Timber. 88 Timberneck Drive. I can see the parcel from my house. Yeah, me too. I don't think anyone asked me to get a letter. Really? How many did you send out? Like 40? Um, it's, it's in the list. There are a lot of duplicates. Yeah. Um, people who own I think it was, it was my understanding the gun club that this was, um, was heavy. I think there were 43 affected properties. Affected it's properties, not. It's, it's right in my bag. Yeah. I, 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 I know. I know. That, I know the I reason. It's not. We're not notifying abutters. We're notifying owners. Owners. Right. This is people who own land that would be affected. Oh. oh so oh, 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 Timberneck. Right. It's whoever owns that parcel oh, was notified. Whoever owns the parcel where they but shoot the, guns. the point is, there's lots of other parcels around town right. that are affected by this. That's right. Yeah. And that's you know there could be a, a lot of people here or. It's like 43 affected. parcels, Bob. Uh, it was about 43. 40. Yeah. Well, 40, 43 parcels, 40 owners. Oh, that's okay. from the GIS survey. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we didn't notify butters. We'd have been notifying half the town with all right. those parcels. No, I understand. Yeah, that makes sense. But I think it would have been a lot more people. That's true. Well, again, um, uh, as, as the chairman mentioned, this article is going to town meeting. So for town meeting, I highly suggest anyone affected a butter come to town meeting and have, have whatever say you will. But this article, as, as a courtesy to the landowners, the board felt obliged to let everyone know, if you own land, mm -hmm. your lands now, now might be subject to this bylaw change, and it has nothing to do with Timberneck. There's other parts of town. But it would have the marketability of the property with this change. You put that in there, right? Well, well you know, I think that's, you know, that's an opinion. That's your that's opinion. opinion. That's all I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, what you we're may. talking about is this is not a public hearing, okay? This is a public discussion, yeah. and there is a difference. And the people that needed to be made aware were the owners of the properties mm -hmm. that would be affected by the bylaw change that's part of the warrant. So, you know, those people would have been apprised that there's a public discussion. Not a public hearing because citizens have the right with 100 signatures to bring a warrant to town meeting. So there is no technical public hearing that happens. It's a public discussion for purposes of it. And if it was a public hearing, for instance, on the piece of land in Timberneck Swamp, then a butters would have been noticed. That's that's the rules. This board felt pretty strongly that this subject needed to get aired, and it yeah. affected both those interested in the proposed change as well as obviously the affected parties whose land would be affected by the proposed change. So, uh, hence hence tonight's uh, discussion. Um, so to, to sort of cut to the chase of what this accomplishes, it's really complex to understand the language because it's, it's about six double negatives. Mm -hmm. But effectively, this limits the use of guns and firearms in certain parcels of land. And when I say limits, it doesn't eliminate it. It just makes more written permission needed to mm -hmm. be sought. Mm -hmm. So that, if you will, a landowner's rights to some degree are being taken away to do what they will, but they can still ask permission to do what they want um, by going through the proper channels. So mm -hmm. since other landowners, and that's again, that's the key, 
if you owned land that was affected by this, if you will, some of your rights are being taken away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why the board felt very strongly that you needed to notice people. Sure. Yeah. Um, and again, what people who own land or niv live by this think about this can go in every direction. But the point are your rights are being changed. You know, you can, you can have different opinions about that. And I know the board, as I am very interested in hearing whatever you want to say tonight. And I will urge you, if uh, you have a deep interest in this, and you must because you came out in such lousy weather, <laughs> uh, plan to go to January 5th town meeting. This, this article will be taken up January 5th. I'm going to guess at approximately 8 o'clock, but I'd get there by quarter of 8 just to be sure. It's at the high school. Is everyone going to be notified? Um, that's Anything a good else? question. We haven't really talked about that. It's um, probably be worth getting an article in the paper. Yeah, we can, we can certainly get some good press coverage. Whether we want to be sending out, you know, 2,000 letters, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But at the end of the night, it's that vote that matters. This is yes. a discussion. This is yeah. a round table. Yeah, but it's no that vote discussion that night that matters. Yeah, this warrant is posted at numerous points in town and, and in the newspaper generally, so it's it's out there. People should be it's able. It's not typical for us to send out. No, no. You know, two thousand or three thousand no. letters. You know, I mean, it is typical for us to broadly, you know, put this information out and be available. And I and I do think because it's uh, um, it affects so many property owners and therefore so many potential abutters that as, as much publication as we can do on an article, yeah. maybe in the paper. Th there's sure. about 9,000 households in Reading. Between the town and the schools, we can hit almost all of them with email. We have about three to 4,000 schools have every school kid. There's some that are omitted from that, like Mr. Brown sitting in the back. Uh, but we cover a, a big swath of the town. What's difficult to know is what do we tell people that this is? I have to write it in common sense language. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, because this isn't a public hearing, we can do that. There won't be a lawyer that says, this is what you have to say that no human being on earth will ever understand. We can just put out a simple thing, try to be as unbiased as possible, and say, this is what's going to be discussed on uh, January 5th. From what I understand, there are really only maybe seven parcels of land this effect, or seven? Actually, no, what I prefer 43. we do, hang on. What I prefer we do now is vector okay. into the public discussion. Yeah. I'd ask everyone, uh, one, stand, state your name, your address. Two, I'm sure there's at least two opinions in the room. And just to be respectful while others are speaking, to listen and wait for your turn. Um, there have been recent events in Reading unrelated to this where kind of common rules and, and etiquette and politeness when it comes to diverse opinions haven't been observed. So I to believe. <laughs> my, only ask, my only ask is that we, we observe them here. So. What I'll do is uh, ask for public input. Raise your hand. You'll be recognized. Stan, give your name. Uh, speak your mind. Sir. I'm Tony Torr. I live in Juniper Circle. Uh, a couple of points I'd like to address from the last from the videotape from the last meeting. Please. Take a couple of minutes. Uh, comment was made. You guys know due diligence uh, representing everybody in town. That was good. Uh, voting to put the bill on and do I put the article on the warrant and do due, due diligence afterwards was not. That was kind of channeling Nancy Pelosi. Let's pass the bill and then see what's in it. Um, comment was just made that the property in question is where the shooting's going on. That's inflammatory. That that's, has the, the people who signed the petition, they've already admitted they don't even know where the shooting's coming from, first of all. So to sit here and say that the shooting is coming from that property is, is not accurate. Um, I'm a little nervous, so excuse me. Uh, there was a comment made last week that that property was deemed too dangerous for archery hunting. And I, I helped rewrite the archery hunting laws in this town 10 years ago. That property was not deemed too dangerous for archery hunting. It was a concession by the hunters uh, who I represented, the uh, Conservation Commission, whose part of their mandate is to manage the town's resources, that it was a small enough area, it was questionable whether it was wise to hunt in there, let's, let's not hunt there, okay? It was never deemed dangerous, okay? That was a misstatement. Uh, the bill, the, the line on the, on the bill refers
So the rights, so this, this, this bylaw is written to account for people's rights, okay? Uh, mentions about defending your life and property, uh, uh, police, military, whatnot, all right? Nor to the rights and privilege of an owner or lessee of land is set forth in Mass General Laws 131 relative to hunting and sport. Right? So there's the panic that, well, the guy can hunt and shoot on his own property. You go to chapter 131, a couple clicks of the mouse, section mm -hmm. 37. An owner and tenant of land if authorized <coughs> by such owner or tenant, any member of his immediate family or his employee is defined, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Basically, can kill animals that are damaging their property. Okay? It doesn't say anything about allowing me to hunt on somebody's property with a firearm if they give me permission. It's, a, it, it's part of a smartly written bylaw that protects property rights. We don't have any farms in town anymore, so, so in that sense, it's kind of antiqu antiquated. I can't pronounce it. Antiquated. Um, antiquated, thank you. Um, that's my spin on it. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know if we've had a lawyer read this and tell us if the police have an opinion on it. As I read it, and I've always read it, I grew up in this town. Trust me, if I thought I could get permission to hunt with a firearm, I would have. We always assumed that because of this, we could not. This was only set aside for people to protect their property rights and depredation from deer or whatnot, damaging their crops. Uh, they have to file a written report with the state if and when they do kill an animal. There's a whole section here you can read it. Again, a couple clicks of the mouse, something pretty easy to find. Um, someone stated at the meeting last week that this law allows anyone in Reading to give someone permission to fire a gun on their property. Again, that's inflammatory, it's not true, okay? Uh, the, the petition is even acknowledged, the bylaw change would do nothing to prevent what was, what's supposedly going on over there, all right? If somebody's firing a gun at midnight, they're not a law-abiding citizen, all right? Changing this doesn't change that behavior. Uh, we always wanna go out and, and punish everybody for the actions of one, and regardless of the consequences. Uh, it, was, it was very clear the petitioners are not patient. They, want, they wanted this on time. They wanted it done yesterday. They weren't interested in property rights or anything else or accurate statements. Uh, just wanted it done. <coughs> right, state law uh, sets a uh, 500 foot minimum distance to hunt from a dwelling or a building without permission. You can shoot from somebody's porch if you have permission. You have to be 500 feet from every building. I can't give my neighbor permission to hunt. He can't hunt on my place if he's not 500 feet from everybody. It's not just me, All right? It's a safety law, it works. Accidents happen, yes. But statements about, you know, the rifles that shoot three miles <clears throat> and whatnot, it, they're irrelevant, All right? It's not like uh, an arrows. We went through this with the bows, you know, how many 100 yards an arrow can go. It's not brave hot. You don't go. You don't shoot an arrow up in the air when it goes down and lands and goes through somebody's shield three miles away. It falls to the ground. A bullet falls to the ground after so many feet, you no know, yards, a mile, whatever it is. Uh, it's not a public safety issue. Uh, There's a typical steer, steer tactic again that, that people with an agenda use when they're uh, anti-gun, anti-hunting, whatever, whatever, they, whatever their agenda happens to be, if they have one. Uh, I don't have an agenda. I hunt. I fish. I have a license to carry concealed. I'm not ashamed of it. I don't have an agenda. I'm here, you know, I don't pretend to be here for any other reason. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Well, I just want to address one point that was raised, just because we have discussed it in the past, but not everyone was in the room. Um, where this is a petitioned article from residents, it's a pretty different circumstance. Town Council has ruled that legally this may be done, and that legally the suggestion they're making is, is within the four corners, if you will, of law. Town Council has not been asked, does this accomplish the purpose for which it's proposed? Because frankly, as town government, we don't fully know the purpose. Mm -hmm. That's up to the petitioner to explain. Um, now that it's going to town meeting, we'll again endeavor to understand what's the purpose of this and try to get an opinion from town council does this do it, but it's really not gonna, I don't think, be a legal question. It's really gonna be an opinionated question. You know, is it, is it good, is it bad? It's really an opinion. 
town council attempts to stay out of the gray areas as much as possible of opinion and stick to law. Um, and again, he has ruled that this is a lawful thing. You can do it. The town has the right to bring this in front of a uh, town meeting and vote on it. If the town had suggested this change to accomplish something, we would have then explained to town council, does this accomplish what we intend? And if it didn't, we would say, well, how can we accomplish that? So we're in a little bit of a different position than we normally would be, where it's, it's a group of 100 petitioners that have decided, you know, and, and there was a couple of them here, so we heard their story, but I don't want to speak for them and tell you I understand what they want to accomplish. They have to speak to that. And if they will speak to that, um, we can have town council give a best effort as to does this accomplish what you think you want. So I just wanted to just clarify that. I'm not the meeting. The, the, I don't know when it was. The tape, the Select tape them. meeting, Selectman's meeting that was on tape that I saw. It must have been the September meeting. Yes, I apologize. I said that. I watched it again last week. I'm sorry. You're right. Made a public comment. Okay, my name is Dorothy Marshall, and I'm 88 Timberneck Drive, and I'm one of the people that started the petition. And um, I did it because I was alarmed because I've lived there 12 years and I didn't understand that we had hunting behind us anyway. And so then when I went to research it to look at our bylaws, I was astounded when I saw that you need selection approval to discharge a, or to light a firecracker on private property, but you do not need selection approval to use a gun. And when I looked into what type of guns you could use, um, I actually spoke to the environmental police. And um, he told me there's nothing to prevent someone from using 30 odd six during the daytime on a coyote. And I know from a, from my research that those can go any bullets can travel anywhere from one to three miles. Our our house backs up to this property, and others on our street um, people aren't aware of it. My son was chased out of there years ago. He was with friends, and this we had just moved there, and I thought it was some hobo. He um, he came running home saying some you know guy in fatigues and camouflage with a knife, chased them out of there saying it's private property, and they all ran home. And I dismissed it, I because I, I just understood there was no hunting in Timberneck Swamp. So this, um, and to address your concerns about pushing this through, this is something I started in July, and it was delay after delay, and just everything that could go wrong went wrong. So I was very frustrated, and, that, and so that's that was my, um, eagerness to push this through, push this through from your perspective, but for me it's dragged on and on. Again, I've been doing this since July. Um, so I think it's a definitely a public safety issue. People aren't aware it's there. Um, you know, there is a, people uh, People believe there's, a, there's no discharge of firearm in, in Reading, yet um, our town bylaw allows that. And yes, there is, um, there is gunshot back there. I'm not saying it's coming from this property, but it is coming from Timberneck Swamp. I know that just probably confuses things by my mentioning that, but at least this is a step in the right direction because it, it makes it illegal to discharge a firearm for hunting purposes without selectment approval. Thank you. Walter Marshall, 88 Timberneck Drive in Reading. It's not an anti-hunting thing. We're just afraid of people uh, shooting a gun on that parcel of land. Uh, and it's not necessarily if you hunting. Yeah. Uh, can I direct a question sure. to you, Ms. Marshall? Uh, when was the last time you heard gunshots? We haven't heard any since I've had. Can you, one at a time? Uh, Barbara Bono. Yes. Mm -hmm. 104 Timberneck Drive. I hear them every once in a while. There's gunshots. Well, do you know where they're coming from? You do have a rifle range. You know, not too far from where no, you live. No, you can tell the difference. Yeah, I I've been here right. 47 years, and I can tell when it's coming. When's the last right time you heard a when, When's the last time you heard a gunshot from that direction? Probably about two months. Did you say March? When you I can tell you that I um, yeah I heard it in the winter time. I think the last time we reported to police, we've heard it many times over the years, but we only reported it two times because we figured it was futile. It's yeah. dark. It's the middle of the night. Um, and um, I can also tell you that the gentleman next door to me, when I told him about the petition, he says, hey, I hear a gunshot out there. And I said, oh, I wish you'd call the police because no one, people think, seem to think I'm imagining it. And 
um, when I was getting signatures up at the high school on voting day, a gentleman came by and he said, um, and I said, I think it's coming from Libby Ave, actually, the gun because people asked me, do you hear it? I said, I think it's coming from that direction. And he said, oh, it's not coming from there. I can tell you exactly where it is. He says, because hunters chased me out of there. He said, one day I was walking in there with my son to do a nature walk a couple years ago. And hunters came out saying, you've got to get out of here. We're hunting. And um, he said, there were, there were tree stands. And he said, and this is going, he said, down near Camp Curtis Gill. But he said, it's where the electrical boxes are. That's what? where he went in. And people were in this is in. this incident was down near Camp Curtis Guild. I well, I think yeah. he means I think he means that end of Abel Street. So we're we're talking about all different locations. Well, that's Timonek Extends all yeah. the way to Abel Street across yeah. the street. That's the right. side. May, so may there I, is uh, hunting going on in there that's but, illegal, and so there are people shooting illegally already. So this will be the first a step in the right direction. At least <coughs> it makes it illegal to do that. Chief, if somebody's hunting out there, wouldn't they they leave shell casings or some kind of residue that would show they had been there? They may, they, may, they may or they may retrieve them and take yeah. them. In your investigations, have you discovered uh, hunting or any firearm discharge in that area? Any evidence? We have, we have, we have not retrieved any evidence to indicate that. Uh, question, Thank you. Question for the marshal. If this article passes, will it achieve the objective of discontinuing any further gunshots? No. I don't think so. I well, I think it will. I mean, right now... I Again, right now, um, it's it's legal to shoot a gun right. on, on private property, yeah. as long as you're within five, 500 feet. But my question's a different one. Will it stop the sounds you're hearing at night? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. We, we feel as though in the, in the town of Reading, it, it's so densely, uh, it's absurd that uh, that a property owner can say to some, hand someone a pistol and say, yeah, you're in my yard, we're in front, we're, we, you can shoot a gun. I, I just think it's bizarre. That, we, that it's not a, well, and he doesn't have to go before uh, the board of selectmen or a police officer or someone to get permission to do that. He's handing the gun to, uh, or she is handing the gun to whoever. I, I just think we need, to, uh, again, it's a step, it's a start. It's not anti hunting. I don't have a thing against hunters. It's just my backyard. And my kids are gone. I, I don't have little kids around, but I'm out there, you know? John, you had a question? Uh, yeah, actually, a comment. And a question. Um, one of them is that, you know, it's, the Mass General Law is pretty clear about firearms that you can use to hunt, which is what this is <coughs> about. And those firearms clearly are not 36, they're not pistols, they are. You can use it during the daytime. I looked, I, I cleared it with the no. environmental police. Hey, you, uh, he told I, me. I, Lee's, Sergeant Lee's, who came to my house, told me, it's nothing to prevent someone, he laughed and said, there's nothing to prevent someone from using a 30, I had to look at 30 odd six. Well, there is no, nothing, nothing to prevent them, them, but it is it's illegal. Not it's not lawful. It's not lawful. It you can't use it on deer, you can use it on a coyote. I, I have MGL right here, ma'am. I can read it to you. Anyway, my, that, that, you can at night time. But let's put that aside dress. for a second, because I'd like to direct a question to Mr. <clears throat> Marshall. You had indicated in your most recent comment that your goal was, and, and this is really where we're trying to, you know, get to the bottom of, you know, what is the goal and is this going to solve, is this going to meet the goal? Um, and you seem to think that the Timberneck Swamp area is one that has created a public safety issue. I mean, I, I've heard you say that. Mm -hmm. um, so my question to you is, why is it that you'd want to impact the other 42 properties with your proposal going not to the Timberneck Swamp area, but to the other, to all 43 properties in Reading. I have, I have, a, concern, I have a concern for those of us and their children and anyone that might be injured by a firearm. And could I throw in the word potential without being inflammatory, we have the potential for eliminating an accident down the road with an inexperienced uh, so person with a gun. Okay, so just so I'm vetted by the local constable. So just so I'm clear, although your stated purpose was to create a public safety environment in the Timberneck Swamp area, really you want to look after all the other properties that are where this is legal, because you know, in fact, you know, a person, according to the law, cannot stand. So I live at 75 Beaver Road. If I give permission to 
John Arena to stand on my front porch and shoot a gun. I can't do that right. legally yeah. because, you know, there's houses all around me. That's right. You know, I mean, that is not something I can, I can't grant that permission within the boundaries of the law. I can't do that. So, again, I'm, I guess what I'm trying to get to the bottom of is the understanding of um, when this petition is not directed at what the neighborhood seems to think to be a problem area, why is it directed at 43 properties? It's unfortunate that um, Mr. Sexton isn't here tonight because he's worked with me on this and he knows a lot of details. And But for one thing, there aren't 42 properties, or there are if there are 42 properties, only seven are really affected by this because others are rifle rangers and that sort of thing. So uh, just as a, as a point of clarity, I'm not sure. I, I thought I was asking Mr. Marshall, but I guess I'll just ask the marshals, okay? Thank you. Um, we had a report delivered to this body following um, your last pr visit and presentation that was very succinct and very clear about the fact that there are 43 properties in this town. Now, some of some small portion of those, you know, one owner and three pieces of property happen to be a legal rifle range. Yes, that's correct, but. We're talking about 40 properties in this in this town. But about seven would be affected. Well, wait a minute. With all due with respect, I am. Ma'am, ma'am, please, please, sir. Uh, he's again, I'm not right intimidated by it. Was, it was this party that, that said, look, at, we have to table this because it isn't just Timberneck Swamp. There are other private property owners. So it was you folks that put the 43 other parcels on the table. I am deeply concerned about my neighborhood, uh, my neighbor's kids, my own kids, and so forth. But certainly, if I'm going to save some little kid going to the Killam School from getting hurt, I'm all for that, too. I, it's, so, so again, it started with Timberneck, and you guys very graciously brought it to my attention that there were 43 other people that were going to be affected. So multiply that times all those abutters. Yet this is the identical petition that you brought forward before we knew those facts. I mean, nothing's changed as far as the petition is concerned. It's exactly the same petition that you brought forward. What you told us to do. You know, us. We didn't tell you. What we didn't tell you to do anything. We said go back and get the, I mean, get we, the petition. We listen and you know and, and kind of look at what comes in, and this has come in twice now. So it's so come in through different that's routes. Right. That's, that's correct. That so we don't have to sit here again. Any other comment from members of the public here tonight? Ma'am? Actually, if, if you don't mind, ma'am, you've already spoken once. I'd like to make sure everyone gets a chance. Oh, okay. We'll double back. That's fine. Mr. Brown. John, a uh, little off the sidetrack, but the petitioner said that she got a lot of those at Election Day. I hope that she was beyond the 150 feet uh, from the polling booth. <laughs> yes, Otherwise, I was. Violation of the I know that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Rhetorical. <laughs> Any other public comment? Just no. Sir, in the back. Hi. Um, 80 Sartell, 22 up the drug. Um, just from experience, I've been hunting for about 35 years. A lot of it's coyote hunting at night, the state of Maine. And I'm not saying that they haven't heard what they've heard in the area, but I can tell you from experience, especially at night, a firearm going off in the dark is almost impossible to detect unless you hear a second shot. And in that situation, we do that same thing to find out who's in the area, that I'm in, et cetera. Um, I'm not saying that someone's not there shooting, but it could be from anywhere in that area. It really could. It sure. seems to come from, I, I pointed where it was coming from, and someone, the police said. But it, it sounds like to me that some, Libya, someone could be possibly doing, mm -hmm. committing an illegal act mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. should be mm -hmm. caught. Right. Mm -hmm. okay? That's right. And, and at the same time, right. I think that they need to be aware also that other items such as an air rifle can produce the same sound as a 22 rifle. Mm -hmm. It's extremely well, loud. Trust me. I don't know. Yeah. It's an air rifle. I it's not a fire. Rifle. One at a time, please. Please. Yeah. One, we have one speaker. Yes. Ma'am. Ma'am. We have one speaker at a time, please. A, a, a firearm has a cartridge that's the, the uh, projectile is propelled by an explosive in the cartridge. An air rifle is either done by compressed air or a spring mechanism. Two different things. But certain air rifles can produce the sound of a 22 or a 22 Magnum rifle. 
that can be easily confused with that. I mean, you don't know if someone's in your neighborhood shooting a raccoon in his trash cans. Who knows? With an air rifle. It could be something as simple as that. Thank you. I like to say. Thank Coming you. from across the swamp. Any other public comment? Okay. Yeah. Well, Mr. Crook. Stephen Crook, uh, town meeting member, Precinct 2 and 137 Pleasant Street. Do you have a map of the town showing the regions inside the 500 foot setbacks that are involved? We had a list of properties by town address. Meeting. I'm not sure we had a physical. We'll, we'll have a map for town. It would be meeting. helpful at town meeting. <coughs> yeah, it'll be there. Ooh. Thank you. Okay. Good input. Thank you. Any other comments? Anyone else like to make a second map, please? The shots I heard came from <coughs> very close to my, the edge of my yard, my lot. I know who shot them, but I won't say who, okay? They were trying to scare the coyotes, okay? And it was, the first time was a couple of years ago when, they, when I called the town hall and they told me there was no hunting or any kind of hunting allowed in Timberneck Swamp. But somebody was shooting out there and it was, right on the edge of my lot. So it didn't come from the rifle range. It didn't come from Libby Ave. It came from almost in my yard. And you know the individual? Yes, I do. But I will not say who it is. <laughs> sir, please stand. Why just, does it always take? Please stand and speak your name and address, sir. Introduce yourself. Anthony Bono, 104 Timberneck Drive. Thank you. Why does it always take something like what happened today, where in the news, a hunter, didn't have a license, didn't have anything, shot a guy, practically shot his finger off, shot him in the shoulder and everything else. He must have been in a residential. A guy was just walking through the woods. He thought he saw something and he shot it. Why do we always have to wait for something like this to happen before anybody does anything about it? Why can't we do something before it happens? Well, somebody either gets hurt really bad or someone gets killed. Then everybody goes crazy and overreacts. Well, I agree with you, sir, but I, I think that individual sounds like he broke at least five existing laws. That's all I guess. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you for your comments. Any other public comment? Ma'am, one I last comment. I just wanted to say my, my kids, now they're all growing up, my children, they use kids 12, 10, 12, 13 go in there to play. Mm. They go find snakes and frogs and stuff like that. You gotta be, I mean, when it's sundown, they might think it's an animal. I think it's terrible, terrible. Thank you, thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Toro. Mr. Toro. Uh, Tony Toro, doing the circle. Uh, I guess we're not gonna, talk about hunting accidents. We can go into the statistics of hunting accidents. Um, you look it up, you're in more danger driving to, driving home from this meeting than you are hunting, okay? We're not gonna, not we're not gonna discuss those matters. <laughs> yeah. I'm speaking. It's yeah, I know, thank people, you. So. I'm sorry, I apologize. But you don't mean it. Yeah, I do, I do, it's sincere, it's from the heart. Yeah, right. um, one, one step at a time, I've heard that Excuse comment. Me. Oh. I meant what I said earlier. I know. Everyone I know. should be respectful, and it starts with Not that. being respectful. Thank you. Thank you. Please, go ahead. Uh, one step at a time. That's another comment that's been made several times. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, as firearm owners, we know what one step at a time means. Okay. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's one step at a time to, to banning hunting, firearms, whatever. Okay. The, again, the agenda. Those are the code words. We all know what they are. Uh, That's it. We'll wait for Tom. All right. Any other comment before we uh, close the uh, public discussion? As I said uh, at the outset, the real this real question, will, the real discussion will occur on town meeting floor, and that's really where the proponents and opponents of the subject matter should plan to be and plan to put their uh, their best mm -hmm. speaking voice and their best arguments forward. It's really the vote of the 192 members on town meeting floor that's relevant. We have all have opinions. At the end of the day, it's a questions put to town meeting, and and uh, that's really where the discussions got to happen. So I'd invite you all to uh, to be there. And uh, I'm sorry. Please stand. Excuse me, John. Sure. <coughs> uh, 
Raymond Boyd, 1451 Main Street. I have bought uh, Bear Meadows. On the town meeting members, uh, is there a list of phone numbers? There are. The town meeting members are on the um, website, if I'm not mistaken. And then phone numbers, too? I couldn't get the phone numbers. There's no phone numbers. Um, phone numbers are not provided by the town. They certainly might be in the phone book. There is a list that's pretty easy to find on the website. Just look, just look up town meeting. And there's a whole list of the eight different precincts. And their phone numbers are on there? No, the phone numbers I are not. Is, it, uh, you know, it might be public information in a phone book. I can probably get that information that. for anybody that's interested. Yeah, we'd like to list it. Um, just off just for those address. in the room, and, and please right. tell your friends and your neighbors, um, if you want to attend January town meeting and you want to speak, you don't have to be a town meeting member. However, if you're not a town meeting member and you do want to speak, please get to town meeting a little bit early. I said it was going to be about 8 o'clock. Um, we might be able to go with that, but the moderator needs to know who needs to, who, who may want to speak who's not a town meeting member and has to then be able to give permission. In the normal course of business, we have non-town meeting members occasionally that want to speak. It's not usually a majority of people that discuss an issue. In this case, there could be a lot of people that want to come in and speak. Normally, the moderator waits until all town meeting members are finished before he'll let non-town meeting members speak as a courtesy to the elected town meeting members. I, I can't speak for him. In this case, he may break with that protocol if there's a large number of people who want to speak. He may have to have some different kind of rules of engagement. But it's really helpful for him, or if you want to let me know in advance via email, um, so that I can prepare him as to how many non-town meeting members may want to speak, and he can think about how to you know, carry on the discussion. Bob, to that point, if folks have prepared material they want to bring, how would they get that um, in play? If, if you do have any kind of presentation presentation material, um, sharing it with me via email first is, is nice. I'll put it all on a laptop, much like this one. We'll bring it to town meeting. We'll all be prepared. Anyone can then say, can you put my thing up there? If you want to bring your own, that's fine, too. Um, just just beware that as if you bring things and present it, it does become an official public record. So I will need a copy of anything that you do. Um, that's why it's a little easier for you and for us in the long run if you provide it in advance. But you don't have to. So, hey, just a question. Sure. Uh, I'm interested in the map of the 43 mm -hmm. parcels. Okay. Where, is that one? Is that somewhere? Do you think? Uh, we can get that? one. Yeah, we have to create one. I'm sure. We have a list of addresses. We'll have to ask our map person to create a map, which we can do, and we'll make that available well before town meeting. Bob, you're certain this would be the night of the fifth? Yes, because you've Take put it into our five. <laughs> put it into that that's right. That's right. So it shouldn't be a problem. I have just, uh, sure. just another question. Are those meetings ever canceled and if they are because of weather or something? No. Never. <laughs> okay. We, we had one in the midst of a yeah. big blizzard Fine. last year. Yeah. It, may impact, it may impact attendance, but it hasn't hit minimum quorum yet. Ma'am? I have a question for that gentleman. I don't know. Right. Direct uh, your question to the moderator, okay. to the chair, please. I'm wondering what his opposition is to removing this because I, I wonder if he hunts in red in reading with a gun I don't think many people do um, I, I wonder what your opposition is to removing that mr. Tory you can certainly respond if you like sure. my opposition is that you, you you've taken away somebody's property right that does not solve the problem okay I read you the section I read the section out loud uh, 131 chapter three. Oh, 37 Section 37, okay, it's, it's an agricultural based thing. It's, it's got no bearing on what's going on here. You are not allowed. Chief, do you have an, an opinion on it? Or have you? Okay, so are we gonna get town council to, to give us some kind of, because I'm well, not a lawyer. I, I've been, you know, I'm just saying how I read this. This this was to protect property rights, okay? I don't own a property big enough. No, I don't hunt in town with a firearm. Um, but th this is somebody's property rights. Again, we don't have farms in town. Uh, but yep. that, that's what the, the spirit of this was. And, and, and taking that away is taking away property rights mm -hmm. for no good reason. Well, okay, and that's not what we do here. Thank you. Bob? Um, I, I had a, an understanding, now I have a much better understanding of the two original petitioners' intention. I can now ask town council that. Um, and, and honestly, with all due respect to you both, 
I also need to ask, how does this affect other property owners? You have your intention, mm -hmm. you want to do this. That's fair. Right. How does it affect everyone else that's not even in the room tonight? Mm -hmm. um, how does that change their rights, their life, or whatever? And so I'll ask them those two kinds of questions, and we'll certainly present all that information. Mm -hmm. And town council will be there at, at town meeting. He can answer questions on the fly. Any other comments? Can I ask a question? Uh, David Panette, 22 Colonial Drive. Um, there's been much talk about uh, shooting and, and so forth in this area. Uh, is the contention that the shooting is going on after dark? That's when the majority of it is? Yes. Well, you can't discharge a firearm at nighttime anyway, so that's illegal to do so. So mm -hmm. someone that's already doing an illegal activity you can change all the laws you want, and it's not going to change we what you do. Well, we realize that. We said that at the outset. I'm sorry. So. Thank you. But right now, it's still, it's legal to do this, and it doesn't make sense. It's a public safety thing. It doesn't make, it doesn't make sense that you need selective approval to light a firecracker, but not to shoot a gun. I understand. Any other public comments? Just, just another yeah. uh, suggestion. You, you will need to get a town meeting member to present the motion from your neighborhood. You probably know mm -hmm. a couple of the folks up your mm -hmm. way. But Thank yeah. you. Good point. Okay. Good point. Thank you, Dan. Just to point yeah. out information, too, for, for everyone in the room, um, the town meeting members will ultimately be the deciding factor on this. Mm -hmm. And I'm fairly certain that the are the addresses on the town website? Yeah. I think they are. They are. And the reason that's I say that is I happen to be a town meeting member. And I, on a regular basis, leading up to town meeting, I get letters, you know, from concerned citizens on a topic. You know, often I'll hear from people in the precinct that, you know, I represent saying, this is how I feel about this. And so I'm guessing that yeah, every yeah. one of those people can't be just getting my name and looking up my address, although I'm in the book and easy to find. But I think that those are probably available on the town website. I would think too. With the, you know, and so, if you wanted to do a mailing, or yeah. or if you wanted to make a phone call, of course you could do that too. But you'd have to find a number. Mr. Tor. Are the town meeting members on an email list? Like from the town, could we do an email? Could well, Bruce, we have some email addresses. They've all been given to us as private information. Right. But uh, so you it's couldn't not call with one for for yeah. people. Okay. Your best bet, I think, is using these the addresses and trying to do a phone number search, which it's 192 names. It's work, but it's not insurmountable. This is this a question? Sure. Do they take a vote that night on January 5th? Do they yes. take well most, li most likely they will. Yes. Yes. There's a small chance if this goes into the wee hours of the night, it'll be continued. I wouldn't think so. You know, people just, I'm new the process. Yeah, yeah. The, the debate usually goes around two hours or something like this, and that is a vote. Yeah. It could be comment. anywhere from a... Yeah. tabled motion to a vote to a continuation into the next night i mean you know it's kind of a it's a bit of a wild card when it comes to town that would be the following evening if it is the next night this but is unusual and that they're meeting three nights in a row the goal was for all parties is to try to i mean we approved it tonight to be one of the early orders of business on the first night so that people could plan and not have to sit through three days waiting for your turn you know but if so. you'd like to stick around after that we've got a beautiful <laughs> charter yeah, and we have a <laughs> charter discussion that'll go on go for two more nights so um, any other comments before we move okay. on can i get the gentleman's name the sitting behind mr toro again uh, raymond boyd okay thank you all right thank you all very much yeah. thank you thank you appreciate it Uh, being nine o'clock, we will. Uh, yeah. Yeah, why don't we take a five minute break while the room yeah. clears? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, 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 meeting. Town meeting? Town you have to run for it. It's an elected yeah. position. No. Oh, okay. What are you asking? <laughs> oh, absolutely, I do. To, to be able to speak. Oh, yeah. To speak mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. what
Marking. Before my time. <laughs> Uh, we'll move on to item E here, and uh, why don't we vote on the special meeting articles, which sure. was the thing I was trying to get to earlier, maybe a little bit out of order. Okay. Um, Shall I offer some motions? Please. Hey, uh, this is the uh, capital improvement program. Move the Board of Selectmen to recommend the subject matter of Article 3 of the 2015 Special Town Meeting Warrant. Do I have a second? Yes. Well, I will second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor of, our, of the motion? Four zero. Okay, so the FY 2015 bu budget. Move the Board of Select and recommend the subject matter of Article 4 of the 2015 Special Town Meeting Warrant. I have a second. Marcy will second the motion. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion? Raise your hand. Four zero. Okay, this is the firearm uh, petition article. Uh, move the Board of Select and recommend the subject matter of Article 5 of the 2015 Special Town Meeting Warrant. Do I have a second on the motion? There's no second? Well, there's a sec I just second. Second means there's no recommendation. Mean. Yeah. The second moves the motion to well, recommend to the subject. So I would, I, well, I, you think, I, I think I want to second it because then, you can then we can vote recommend want, or not one recommend. way or the other. Right. So right. I will second that okay. motion. John seconds the motion. Any right. further discussion? Yeah, I, I think, yes. well, Miss, Mr. Torek crystallized my opinion pretty succinctly, I think, well, as to why I should not support this. Uh, well, well-intentioned, uh, I would agree with all the discussion from the sidebar that went on. I'm not sure this actually solves the problem at hand. I think there are other laws existing right now that if enforced, if in fact there haven't been gunshots, to which we have never seen physical evidence that there are any, but it doesn't mean they didn't happen. I didn't mean to imply that. It seems that enforcement of existing laws takes care of the problem. Especially hunting on a, somebody's property line, looking for coyotes. Just to amplify that point tonight. I mean, nothing, nothing brought it more clearly than to hear that that deals with hunting, but yeah. we're really talking about shooting and, yes. and changing laws regarding the hunting. Right. Are going to have precious little to do with um, with random discharge of weapons in the middle of the night. Correct. Any other comments? Uh, yes, I, I would echo both of those statements. I mean, the idea of Passing a law to make something more illegal than it already is, you know, somehow is superfluous in my mind. Um, particularly when we think about this and the impact that it has on 40 property owners, you know, none of which have filed any kind of public safety complaint issues with us. None. Um, and none of their abutting neighbors have filed a complaint with us, save one. So, you know, when I, this is the second time we've seen this in its exact format, discussing one piece of property, yet the proponents of this have no interest in limiting their discussion to the one piece of property in question. Furthermore, you know, um, one of the abutting signers of the petition claims to have knowledge of people illegally discharging firearms but will yeah. not report or yeah. I, 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 I'm just no. I'm scratching I'm just, my head on that one I mean I can't support something that is irrelevant to the issue right. so that's kind of where I'm coming from Marcy? I'm in agreement I'm, I don't think I need to add to it because my points have already been made I'll say one thing on behalf of the marshals. I do respect people coming forth and speaking their mind. Sure. I think democracy sure. really is founded on a the messy process of getting an idea out, getting it refined, and understanding both the benefit and the impact costs. And notwithstanding their presentation, I get it. And I can understand why town meeting is going to have an equally difficult time, I think, understanding all the perspectives. But I think that's that's necessary and I think it's good for the process as long as it's contained and well managed and again we have well behaved uh, uh, participants in the process so I, mm -hmm. I do respect that folks come with divergent opinions and wish to have their their town meeting members opine on the, the merits and uh, or lack thereof well, watching town meeting and their careful deliberation of the zoning bylaws I'm sure they will give equally uh, serious deliberation to this question and come up with the right answer. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Um, th there being no other discussion, all those in favor of the motion? 
All those against the motion? Zero for zero. We've lost Paula. Uh, she said she was leaving and there was a signature folder going yes. along. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I okay. thought this was my Christmas present. No, <laughs> it's green. <Sorry. laughs> There's only one thing for you guys in there. Did the road I signed it. Right. Uh, the next one is Article 6, which is? Building Committee. Building Committee. Thank you. Um, would the Board of Selectmen recommend the subject matter of Article 6 of the 2015 Special Town Meeting Warrant? RC seconds. Any further discussion? Yeah. Great step forward. Thank you, Bylaw. I can't thank you anymore. But thanks to the Bylaw Committee. Much, much long deliberation. Yes, yes. I do think it, it at the on the floor town meeting, it's probably worth um, wrestling with that matter of focus as it relates to that last paragraph. And I'm mm -hmm. fearful again for the reasons we stated earlier. I'm fearful mm -hmm. that that becomes a. a a loose thread that, if tugged on, ends up undermining the better work, the stronger work of the committee. Steve, were you here from that discussion? I don't remember when you walked in the room. No. Okay. This last um, paragraph here, a highlight, there was a discussion about um, what does that really mean? Don't we have a capital plan that already does that, if you will? And what's the role of the building committee with respect to facilities and the capital plan? more about reporting to town meeting sort of the state condition of, uh, goes back to of buildings. For example, we have had over the years, we, we've been told you know, the library has, has issues with, with leakage or other other things. We've been told that the Killam School, for example, sooner or later, renovations would have to be brought fully up to the current ADA and other things and kind of the list of the, of the issues in the, the 1960s design it has. So I think the intent is that to kind of so that town meeting has to feel of you know what what is going to need major work uh, or, or what is anticipated you know are you anticipating to do a complete rebuild of say your DPW garage or your west side fire station or are you going to pick up building a new giant cemetery or facility, or, as well as, you know, you're getting, you know, this building is is, is going to need some. Well, this, this doesn't have any threshold, though. So it's just a complete inventory of all physical condition and anticipated repairs or renovations. So there's nothing in here that speaks to those larger things you're talking about. So ev and any repair that's need to be done to any building is now on this list, which is, Right. Much more operational in nature, I would think, than what you would want in a permanent building committee. You're, you're, you're the committee of big things. Mm -hmm. You're the committee right. of big singular things. And this is the day-to-day -day operations and maintenance work of an organization that's fully staffed, looking five years out, and has already baked that into a capital plan. I don't think the spirit of what this committee was formed was meant to go either as a counterpoint or a review of that. And the only thing that leads you that direction is that last sentence where it says, They'll, perform, they'll work to create that inventory and then present their findings at, in annual report to town meeting. We already have the capital plan in town meeting where most of those repairs get funded. And therefore, all those discussions have to be there. This has the potential to undermine that or come right at, at cross purposes to it. And it's, at a minimum, I don't see how it enhances it since all the trades will have already been made. Bob? Let me just add one point. Um, by definition, the capital plan has two constraints. One is 10000 or up. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of things in the op school, school operating budget that also mm -hmm. do this work. Yeah. And then the other is lifespan of the expected piece of equipment. So if it's a police car, it's more than 10000 It's only going to last two years. Mm -hmm. It doesn't meet the criteria for capital. So, so the way it's worded, and I don't really know what the intention was because I didn't attend all your meetings, but I know this was discussed was that the committee differentiated between they did not want the two million associated with that paragraph. But there was never any real discussion that I was in the room for about, well, what is the actual intent? I don't think your intent was, if you will, to micromanage every single possible thing no. that was done in a building. So a, a probably a simple amendment or even an explanation about the intent <coughs> so the building committee understands what its purpose is would clarify it. I don't remember a discussion about explicitly not putting in the two million number or another number. I mean, I, I, I would say, as I, I see it, it's 
anticipated major repairs, though major is not explicitly stated. I think that I had suggested uh, that wording and, and the committee decided not. I think I put significant or substantial or something like that. I, you know, I think I, I think sort of the, the sense big. was that they wouldn't come and say, well, you know, gee, we've got a dripping faucet over right. here and we've got, you know, some leaky windows that it cost about 100000 bucks to fix. And so much as to say, you know, we need to do a major overhaul in this building because of whatever. Or we want to connect the former library to the town hall next to it. It's one of these years is you know, going back now, it's things like that. But I'm not a certain it's not a G we can replace it with a and an old fire station, you know, it's it's hundred thousand dollars or three hundred thousand dollars or whatever. The motion I would make would actually be to strike the clause and will summarize its finding in an annual report. I think it's fine to have an inventory. I think it's a great idea to have an inventory of a long-lived item where it either ages out or it's got a finite lifetime and you have an all-in-one place where that is, at least on paper. The, the camel's nose under the tent, I think, is and then you get to pitch that to town meeting in an environment where there's essentially a parallel path or uh, in the form of the capital plan. In a perfect world, there'd be no conflict. There'd be in perfect agreement. But you could foresee one group saying, well, I think it ought to be that building we do first. And But the capital plan says it's that building. And now you're into it. And I'm not sure it anticipates saying you ought to do this one first or that other than you might rank them like this building is in very bad shape. This is kind of bad. This is pretty good. This one's fantastic. But that then forces the question, what but do you do with very bad, well, maybe a building of very low importance, whereas the one that's kind of bad may be of enormous importance. So you might prioritize them differently. You already have a director of facilities, though, that's very much worried about that in the concert of all the other balls he's got in the air and all the other tasks. It's the thought there's an independent group then providing their opinion as to the state of that, state of that inventory. It's, it's really that last phrase that... that well, I mean, it, cer it certainly can be, a, could be amended or a part of the last paragraph could be struck. Right. I hate to see a structural vehicle that creates a problem down the road. It's the law of unintended consequences. And, and maybe this ne that was not the intent, and that'll never happen. But you've got two groups that are potentially providing an opinion on the same thing. That almost always means they won't well, agree. I, I think we um, imagined, and maybe again, this doesn't do a good job of it, that the, the two groups were kind of working with each other. Right? Facilities kind of knows what all the little things that are going bump in the night in the different buildings are, and presumably passes that on back. And then I, I think it was really intended sort of a very kind of a high level view to tell me, you know. Well, you know, it sounds like it was going to be informational, not instructional. Yeah. First and. Mm -hmm. But secondly, I think to your point, Steve, if that wording was somehow changed to reflect what you just said, which is permanent building committee will work in concert with you know facilities to create a report back, you know, to the town meeting because it's a it's a committee of town meeting. At, at this stage, part of the only way to achieve that is to do it as an amendment at town meeting. I get or that. Or to come back in a future town meeting. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, either way, I guess, but to me, it would, it doesn't sound like it would be an unfriendly amendment to the No, it's not meant to be. I think, you know, it, it, somebody could structure something, and, yeah. and probably the best time is to get it right when we do this anyway. Yeah, yeah and maybe the idea that we put, you know, some, some suggested language somebody have it at the ready as a yeah. as a proposed friendly amendment so that we can kind of tie a ribbon on this thing which I think would be preferable to bringing it back at another time yeah you kind of got everybody with their with that thinking cap on and you know to try to consummate it I think would be a better thing to do all at once. and regardless of what we do it would not surprise me if in a couple of years we came back again because we discovered this is great but this thing's a little tweaking sure. anyway once we yeah, well, yeah well I think that was always true yeah, yeah that, that'll that'll I mean, if that's an obvious thing you may as well get it now yeah right mm -hmm. right that's it I don't think there's any need to take action tonight but no, while you're in the room it was useful to talk to you about it Steve mm -hmm. all right um, any other discussion on the motion all those in favor of the motion Four zero. Okay. Charter Part One. Move the floor of selectmen recommend the subject matter of Article Seven of the 2015 Special Town Meeting Warrant. Second. Marcy seconds. Further discussion. Uh, just to say it again, thank you. Congratulations mm -hmm. on pulling this document together, Charter Committee. Well, and, and everybody who participated and added. 
their comments. What did you do when you were done? Did you go and get a beer or did you go and sell it? It's not done. No, it's not done. You haven't had that <laughs> beer. <laughs> okay, any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion? 4 0. Move the board, this is the uh, part going to the legislature. Move the board of selectmen recommend the subject matter of Article 8 of the 2015 Special Town Meeting Warrant. Marcy will second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 4 0. Bob, should we vote on Article 9 before or after? Um, I think we have enough to go on. Actually, know. that's a really good question. Yeah, because we have the guts of it. We the same question. executive session. We could come out of the I, executive and. I don't see why you wouldn't support this because yeah. all it is is a placeholder. That's what I'm honestly. Saying. You're not suggesting we settle a case. You're suggesting um, that the language you know, be allowed to be in the, in the charter. So, so like a motion to tell me Move the Board of Select and recommend the subject matter of Article 9 of the 2015 Special Town Meeting Award. Marcy will second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 4-0. Okay. I'll make sure to write up the Select and vote as to allow the flexibility of future action. Okay. This is what you want. Yep. Thank you. Uh, at this point, uh, it's right on time, 9.30, 9.27. Shall we wait three minutes? <laughs> no, it's not a hearing. Uh, approve the addendum to the Regional Health Agreement with Melrose. Yeah, we have one other, that's one other one. Discussion first or motion? I want to uh, discuss it. Okay. It's, um, the motion is, is, you can see there's five. All right. Well, let me just give you a quick background. It's, it's not complicated. We have um, a couple of vacancies of community services. One is public health nurse. The public health nurse, nurse left sometime uh, in the summer, approximately. Um, there's kind of a mix up in communications, I guess. We're part of a regional agreement with Melrose and Wakefield. Um, the current uh, shared director said uh, she'd take care of it. And we said, fine, great. Here she always does. What I hadn't expected was to be then pre presented with an invoice outside the bounds of the current contract we have to take care of it. Um, it's justified. It's money we did spend, in fact, to provide a service. Um, you know, whether we should have had it approved ahead or behind doesn't matter. We, we got the service, and, and it was a legitimate service. Um, and as I read the contract and discussed this issue, the invoice itself, is not something I want you to authorize. I want you to authorize to me for the balance of this uh, term through just June 30th uh, to be able to decide myself and allow me to sign such invoices. If, if you were to involve a lawyer, I probably have that authority now because of a clause that's in the contract. It's one of those other duties as assigned yeah, kind of things. Yeah. But I wanted to be right up front with you and describe to you, we have this invoice, there may be other invoices which are not specifically spelled out in the contract, but they are reasonable expenses, you know, having to do with the fact we may have a vacancy in staff and they're helping. Mm -hmm. and, and just to further that, the reason I was especially surprised to get an invoice is we get so much stuff for free. Um, it's mutual aid in public health, much like police and fire you're more right. familiar with. Right. Um, we get help from uh, all the mm -hmm. people that aren't in our district. It's just a, you know, I'm out, can you help? Professional courtesy. Yeah, it's professional courtesy, and it's much appreciated, I have to say. Um, so I was a little naive and perhaps thinking, oh, yeah, everything's fine. It's always free. You, Reading is usually on the providing side of free stuff, so I'm okay taking it. <laughs> what was the amount of the invoice in round numbers? It was numbers? like $3,000, okay. not a big deal. And you would expect any subsequent invoice to be I, in that order? Yeah, same order of magnitude. And it has to do specifically with certain state requirements on contagious diseases and reporting. So it's not, if you will, significant or heavy lifting. Okay. Thank you. The, uh, in view of that, uh, move the Board of Selectmen delegate authority to the town manager to approve payments for public health services provided by the City of Melrose due to temporary Reading position vacancies. Marcy seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Should we make that through June 30th? I don't think it's necessary. Okay. And I think, what it's, I think what's important just to point out is that this was ours. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, ours we didn't pay for out of the left pocket, so now yeah. we're going to pay for yeah. it out right. of the right, right. pocket. Right. I mean, it's not just right. a, no, there's no the real money moving out of the budget. Yeah. It's right. just a, a reallocation and, and under Bob's discretion, which I think is should highly give, appropriate. Should we give Bob the right to create invoices for Town of Reading as we deliver services? <laughs> 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 we'll cross that bridge. You don't need to give me that authority, but yeah. I. 
don't know if anyone will pay them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? 4 0. Minutes? Minutes. We have two sets of minutes in front of us from October 28th. Move the Board of Selectmen approve the minutes of October 28th, 2014 as amended. Second. Any further discussion? I had something, but I could not find it again when I looked, so. Yeah. The minutes right, will stand as written. Yeah, okay. All right. Any written. further discussion? All those in favor of the minutes as recorded? Three. All those against? Oh. One. Abstain okay. is one. So it's 301. I was okay. not at the meeting. Got it. Move the Board of Selectmen approve the minutes of November 18th, 2014 as amended. Marcy will second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the minutes as written, raise your hand. 4 0. Okay. You want to take us into executive sure. session? Sure. With the Board of Selectmen going into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and to discuss discuss strategy with respect to litigation and the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the body and not to reconvene an open session. This is a roll call vote, so one at a time, John. Okay, you need a second and roll oh, sorry. Second. Marcy will second. Roll call vote, John? Yes. Dan? Yes. John Arena, yes. Marcy West? Yes. Okay, four zero. We are adjourned. All righty. Re reconvene next door? Yep. Um, that's probably a good idea. Yeah.